Okay, so this is something I've been kind of planning on doing for a long time, but I've never actually gone around to trying to set it up and record it. But I'm going to go ahead and update my conclusive board game tier list. And if you disagree with me, too bad, this is actual fact. Um, when I kind of like rank games in my head, you know, we have like these category names over here, a lot of categories, but ultimately it comes down to if we were to be going to like a game night or something, how much would I be willing to actually play this game? Now, this isn't me directly critiquing the games themselves. This is just how personally fun I find them to be. And sometimes that is the game's fault if the game has bad mechanics or ways that could be easily gimmicked. But oftentimes it's just personal preference. And I'll try to do my best to highlight when I feel like it's personal preference dragging the game down versus like just being an inherent fault in the game design. So I have all of these games. This is more or less every game I've ever played. It's not all of them. Um, I probably admitted some games, usually like the Hasbro, like Parker Brothers kinds of games that are super generic. I've included a few of them, like you'll see Monopoly in this list. We got Candyland. Ugh. Yeah. Well, well, I'll talk about Candyland when I get to Candyland, but yeah. Pretty much every board game I've played. And... Yeah, let me kind of go over these categories really quickly. All-time favorites. These are games that I have considered my favorite at one point or another. They are games that I find to be very fun, very replayable. I'm pretty much always down to play them. Excellent games are games that I really enjoy. Like, I would be willing to play them pretty much any time. But I don't really have as much of a personal connection to them, I suppose. Let me and that kind of separates them from like the all-time favorites the all-time favorites being just a little more enjoyable very fun games are games that i quite enjoy i feel like they don't quite hit the peak of like excellent games or you know my all-time favorites but these are games i'll be willing to play most of the time fairly oh that says fairy fun hold on all the fairy games go in this category no so fairly fun Fairly fun games are games that I would play um, happily. Like, I would usually happily play a game that's in the fairly fun category. But I also wouldn't necessarily suggest it. Like, if I had my way, I would want to play a game in, like, any of these three categories. Pretty much just, like, whenever. But a fairly fun game is a game that I'm not going to complain if, like, someone suggests it. But it's also probably not going to be my first recommendation. Okay, games. Okay games are games that I would be super enthusiastic about playing, but I would also be totally okay with it, like, as well. Like, they're okay. I'm not excited to play them. Lacking games are games I'm less willing to go along with. These are games that I feel have flaws, usually, or they're just not my kind of game. I will, I will play these games somewhat reluctantly, but, like, I'm not going to really, like, push back against the group if they really want to play one of these games i just recognize i'm probably not going to have like the most fun going into it mediocre games these games kind of suck uh <laughs> these are games that i would really push back against the group and be like are you guys you guys really want to play these games like because they can be fun but I also find them to be, like, while I'm playing them, I would just think, God, I wish I was playing something else. Terrible games. Really don't want to play these. Um, these are games that I feel just fundamentally do not work. They have really bad mechanics or were really poorly thought out or they're just super repetitive. These are games that... I really just do not want to play. Not even games. You know what? We're going to just we're gonna throw Kinnyland in there right now. So what I consider a game to be is a game. A game is something where your decisions impact the likelihood of you winning. K 
Candyland plays itself. The only meaningful decision you make with Candyland is choosing to play the game, which is already the wrong decision. Um, Shoots and Ladders is the same thing. There's like some proverb about how like, oh, Shoots and Ladders is a metaphor for life because it seems like you're going up and down and you have no control over your, you know, your own destiny and all this karmic stuff, which is fine for a metaphor, but terrible for a game. Um, I would never play these unironically because Candyland is really just like an extended like raffle, essentially. Like, yeah, it's kind of like fun to make fun of, but ultimately I can't even consider it a game. So, all right. And with that, I guess we're going to just get into it. Five second rule. Five second rule is this game where um, you're given five seconds to kind of like, oh man, I'm already forgetting the rules for this one. I believe in five second rule, you have five seconds to get someone to guess the card. And it's kind of like taboo, I believe. Um, this one is going in like mediocre. It's not terrible. Um, I definitely wouldn't be my first thing to do. Like this wouldn't be my first choice. It's probably fine if you're like drunk, but this also, it's just, it's like a generic party game. And it's not really one of like the really fun party games. And I suspect that this is one, kind of one of those games that would lose its replay value pretty quickly over time. Six Nymphed. Six Nymphed is a game where it's a really interesting like card laying strategy game where you're trying to play cards from your hand that are, you know, not too high or too low, or you risk having to like pick up the whole thing. Six Nymphed is like fairly fun. I do quite enjoy it. It has a good level of strategy while also being really quick, really easy to teach people with like surprisingly like in-depth mechanics. Seven Wonders. Seven Wonders. Yeah, Seven Wonders is also fairly fun. Cool game. Um, Lots of different, you know, victory styles that you can kind of go for. It's a drafting game, which, honestly, I quite like drafting games. Drafting, for those of you who don't know, is that there's, like, a, a hand of cards that gets passed around the table. You get that hand, you choose which one you want for yourself, and then you pass it and hope to get, like, as good cards, like, as you can. Seven Wonders is good. Um, there's different victory conditions and which lets the game have like quite a bit of replayability. You could go for like different technologies, you could go for military, you could go for like the blue strategy, which is terrible. But yeah, Seven Wonders, pretty simple game. Uh, fairly fun, you get a good amount of replay value out of it. Above and below. Gonna throw that up in excellent. It might not deserve to be quite that high, but I very much enjoy Above and Below. It was one of the first... I don't know if this is quite a Euro game, but it was the first obscure game I played when I joined like my board game club in college. And it's this really cool game where it's a engine builder, where you're recruiting villagers, and you're also exploring the below, which... When you explore the below, you're you're given like a narrative. You know, you go down there, you see some dude like stuck in a spider web, and it's like, do you help the guy who's stuck in the spider web, or do you steal from him and be a dick? Like, you get better rewards if you do the latter, but you also lose like honor and stuff. So, it's really fun because there's also like a push your luck kind of element when you're you know, choosing which decision to make in, like, these stories. And that combines well with the above part of the game, which is, like, really doing an engine builder. You're trying to make your village the best as possible, and you're trying to, you know, get a bunch of resources and build the best stuff, and that helps you build more stuff. And, yeah, it's just a really fun game. Agricola. This is gonna piss a lot of people off 
Um, and this one I will say is pretty much entirely my fault and not necessarily the game's fault. And by that I mean Agricola is a fine game depending on the kind of person you are. This one is, I feel like it's kind of like an engine builder, like above and below. But for me, probably one of my most miserable board game experiences was signing up to play a game of Agricola where... I think the game went on for like two or three hours and I was only invested in it for like the first 15 minutes. But like I couldn't leave because that would have just ruined the game. But in Agricola, I think you're trying to be like a farmer and get different like kinds of, you know, animals and things. But ultimately, it felt like a very dry and boring game where I spent most of it waiting for people to make pretty like complex decisions. The game didn't really stand out to me in any way. Um, it's not... Okay, if this was just, like, in terms of, like, how mechanically good the game is, it would probably be higher up. But the game just, honestly, flat out, does not work for me. Um, if the group was <laughs> suggesting to play Agricola, I would actually just leave. So, yeah, that's kind of my thought of it. Um, Anomia. Um, it's going to go one of here these two is it better than this yeah okay so anomia is a game where really it's a game where you're trying to be constantly thinking on your feet and getting ready to butt heads with like the other players how it works is that everyone has a card in front of them where there's a symbol on the card in a category so like a star and Bruce Willis movies. If one of the other players flips over a card in front of them that has the star, you guys have to like butt heads in that you have to say what is in their category before they can say something that's in your category. Now it's a fun game at first where it really suffers is replay value. There are six decks in this game with just a variety of different like phrases and like categories and stuff but it's gotten to the point where i've played it so much that i kind of just have pre-planned answers to everything which makes the game like a lot less fun because it really just comes down to a game of like who's paying the most attention and who can just like blurt out words like the fastest which honestly like gets to be pretty tiring so like if I was to rank this game after just like one or two playthroughs, it'd probably be more up here. But it just doesn't have enough replay value and there's no real strategy to it. It's really just a game of reactions, which is why I'm putting it down here. Apples to apples. Yup. Um, you know what? Let's get Cards Man Against Humanity here too. So Cards Against Humanity and Apples to Apples. This is another one where these are not objectively terrible games. The issue with both of these games is that I consider myself to be like a creative person. If you're familiar with like the Jackbox games, there's like Quiplash, which is just these games, but with the option to write in your own answers. And because of that, these games really suffer if you're playing with people who are creative and able to like come up with funny things like on the fly because nine times out of ten whatever you think of will be funnier or more interesting than what ends up on like the cards and especially in like cards against humanity which i probably know like all of the cards from that game at this point and they were kind of fun when i was in like middle school but at this point i'm just like eh, they're kind of cringe honestly so the, if this is still like these are still fine games to play i will say if you do have trouble like coming up with like kind of funny things to say like this is like a perfectly acceptable game if you know you've had a long day you're tired and you just want you know those haha -ha funnies and not have to really think too much cards against humanity is nice because of that like you can just kind of like you look through your hand figure out what the best card is play it I will say another kind of grinding point against these is that I don't like the judge necessarily. 
having one judge just pick one favorite answer out of many kind of sucks because you can play a card that you think is funny and then the judge just arbitrarily decides to pick something that is oh that felt real this round or you know none of these are accurate because like you know they're all unrealistic it's funny but it's not realistic so i'll pick the boring realistic one and it really sucks like having that happen to you where the judge just kind of like picks on a whim so games were like kind of the group votes on which is the funniest one or like which is the best one i find to be a lot better just because like one judge is kind of it's very fickle i suppose you're also at the mercy of your hand too much in these games which i don't love either all right, Arctic Scavengers. We're gonna throw this here. Arctic Scavengers is a deck building game where you're trying to build up, you know, your gang of Arctic Scavengers. And it's what separates it kind of from other deck builders is that there's this mechanic in it where you go directly head to head with the other people in order to get this kind of rare resource where if you get it and get it in your deck it's super good but you have to kind of hold back cards not use them to build up your engine but instead use them to try to beat what the other people have so you can get the really good card really fun game honestly i love pretty much i love most deck builders and this is definitely a very quality deck builder so I think I would put this one above, above and below. <laughs> All right, Avalon. This one is going in my all-time favorites. Now, it's interesting because Avalon has some real flaws, I think. I have played quite a lot of Avalon, and I loved it to death in high school. But it is one of those games where once you start getting to it at like a high enough level it stops being fun because there is very optimized tactics for avalon that really are just objectively like the best things to do sorry i should back up a little bit avalon is a social deduction game where you know some people are traders other people are loyal servants there's like roles that give you information roles that hide information and all of that stuff and the group has to decide on teams to go out and if you're good you want only good people on the team if you're bad you want bad people on the team right the so playing this with like a group of like you know casual people a lot of fun love it like i've had i've probably played hundreds of games of avalon at this point and most of them are very enjoyable where <laughs> You know, either you're trying your damnedest to try to figure out, like, who are the bad guys? Do you trust friend A or friend B? Or other games, you're, like, the evil guy, and you're just trying to be all, you know, like a sweet angel and not cause any conflict, but also cause all the conflict, and it's wonderful. But, yeah, there is, a like, the more you play Avalon, the better you get at it. Ultimately, the worse the game gets because the game there are certain strategies that are not fun but they are just objectively the most effective and you would probably want to house rule some of those strategies out in order to have a more enjoyable experience okay awkward turtle hmm awkward turtle is gonna go there where is taboo Taboo is here, okay. All right, so Taboo and Awkward Turtle are pretty much the same game. Only difference between them is Awkward Turtle has awkward cards. Um, they are cards that either like sound gross or they are, you know, inappropriate in a way that like a middle schooler might find funny. But I think the point of it is to kind of, it's like Taboo where taboo you're trying to get someone to guess a word without saying the word itself or other related words and you're trying to go through as many of those as you can awkward turtle is like that it's just you know it's got a uh, awkward things to say and ultimately these two are pretty similar i do prefer taboo 
I will say, over Awkward Turtle. Um, just because Taboo, I feel like the awkwardness doesn't actually help the game. Um, and Taboo is just like, it's a it's an okay game. I do quite enjoy, like it. <clears throat> I do quite enjoy Taboo. So, I would probably put in okay. It's not something that I would, you know, suggest is like my first game, but it's also not something that I think is, you know, like, bad. Like, it's a good game. It does what it needs to. Okay. Azul. Um, hmm. Which of these tiers do I want to put it in? I'll put it here for now. Azul is a very fun game. It's a really satisfying tableau builder where you have to think really strategically about what kind of pieces are available to you at the moment. You have to think about what your opponent is going to do. You have to kind of do some like a lot of calculations of, well, if I grab this piece and he grabs this piece and that leaves me with this piece, but I could also take this piece, which hurts him. So there's a lot of really satisfying and fun decision making in Azul. The pieces are beautiful. It's a very aesthetically pleasing game. And it's quick too, which is really nice. Like some of these, you know, there are times where you don't really feel like playing, you know, like a three hour game of something, even if it's like really fun. But Azul, I'm like usually willing to play it just cause it's such a quick and easy game great for small numbers of people and yeah it's really fun backgammon i'm gonna throw backgammon in lacking it's not bad um there is a good amount of strategy to it that i quite enjoy i played backgammon a few times um there are some like satisfying like tactics you can do, you know, do you try to, do you focus on only a few pieces at a time? Do you spread them out? Do you go offensive or defensive? There's a lot of like interesting like strategy like to this game. So I think it's, it's lacking. It's not like the aesthetic is pretty boring. Like there's no theming to it. Cause obviously like backhand is fucking older than like the United States at this point. Like it's so old, I'm sure that it kind of lacks kind of the the th the theming of it I suppose but it's a it's an all right it's a all right game like if someone was like you want to play backgammon I would just probably look at them as the 50 or 60 year old you know man that they probably are and just be like yeah I guess like kind of like a good analogy is that if you were to go to like you know your grandpa's place and he was like, you want to play, you know, some kind of game? He's going to offer you a game like Backgammon or like Crib, Cribbage or like some game like that. And honestly, Backgammon is probably the best you're going to get out of that, which is why I think it belongs right here. I would actually play it over these, all of these games, I think, interestingly enough. Balderdash. Balderdash is going to go here. Balderdash is a game where you kind of... So someone is going to get a word that is some word you've never heard of before, like bum puzzle or something like that. And everyone writes a description for what they think the word might mean and try to trick everyone else. And one person is going to know the real definition. They're going to write it down. Then they read them all out loud and you know everyone tries to pick out what is the correct definition <clears throat> sorry i'm not used to doing this much talking and mostly people with like the cards you know that they put down if it was just that it would probably be lower down but there's different categories there's words there's people so you have to make up like what they are famous for there are movies, which is my personal favorite, because I just love writing insane things, like, as the plot of, like, a movie, and just seeing who, like, falls for it. Um, there's laws. 
which are just ridiculous laws that for some reason still exist. Like you can't tie a giraffe to a street post in San Francisco. I believe that is actually a law still. And then finally, there is acronyms for like organizations. So it'll give you an organization that has the acronym of like F I A F or something like that. And you just have to like figure out like come up with like an interesting like acronym for that and see if people believe it. So yeah, it's a fun game. Um, okay. Next up, Bananagrams. Where am I gonna put this bad boy? Hmm. I'm gonna throw Bananagrams here, I think. Bananagrams is a fun game where you're given a bunch of tiles that are kind of like Scrabble word tiles. And you start off with a small number of them, like four or five, and you have to rearrange them in kind of like a crossword sort of way so that all of your letters get used in words. Then you say like banana or something and you get another tile and then you have to fit that one in and rearrange it. And this continues until like all the tiles run out and you are left with this really elaborate crossword style thing and you and the other person are kind of competing in order to complete your crossword first um it's a good game i really like the kind of frantic nature of it the main issue it suffers from is that the game doesn't really matter until like the last moment. Like as long as you can kind of keep pace with your opponent, it doesn't actually matter who's ahead. Like it doesn't, it honestly doesn't even matter if you make, if you do like your crossword and say banana before the other person, cause you both get a piece and then you have to rearrange it. It doesn't matter at all until the very last one. And if you just get like a raw deal at the very end, like you get an X is like your last letter and you have to panic trying to fit it in, then like the other person could easily beat you despite being behind the entire game. This is a game that I think could easily be much higher if there was just like slightly different rules, really. Like it's a very fun word game. Um, it's a bit, you know, never my first suggestion, but I would grudgingly play it if someone offered. Okay. It's kind of wild that I'm only at B so far. This is <laughs> this is how much we have left. So I'll probably have to break this up into several videos. Okay. Bang. There's two versions here. We have bang the card game and bang the dice game and normally you would think that you know it's the same game right wrong um i'm probably gonna put bang the card game here and then i'm gonna put the dice game here oh no not between there we go okay so why is the dice game better than the card game? Bang, for those of you who don't know, is a social deduction game where one person is a sheriff. Um, some, and everyone knows who the sheriff is. Some people are deputies who want to protect the sheriff. Some are outlaws who want to kill the sheriff. And then there's a renegade who wants to kill everyone and be the Highlander. Now... What differs is that the dice game is a lot more streamlined than the card game. And the card game, the card game is very complex in that you draw cards that either, you know, shoot someone, causes shots to miss you, you get weapons, you can get a barrel, you can get alcohol to heal yourself. And there's all this like complex stuff. And the the card game hasn't really been gotten all the kinks worked out of it there are some like really disgusting magic the gathering level of like combo plays you can do with certain characters that just completely blow people out of the game in a really like 
kind of gross way. There's like a pro CD video where he talks about like the dairy cow farmer and he goes into like a two minute turn with like cheese somersaults just to kill the guy. And there are moments like that in Bang the Card Game, which is why I drop it down a little bit. It's also a lot longer than the dice game because it does have like a bit of that bloating, that bloat to it. The dice game is nice. It's very streamlined. You are at the mercy of the dice, but in kind of a fun push your luck style way which I think works like a lot better. Um, and yeah, honestly, bang the dice game. Pretty solid game. It's all right. Probably wouldn't suggest it, but would not be against playing it either. Battle for Rokugan. This one is going to go up here. How I can best describe this game is that it is really a mix between... Um, Stratego and Risk. Now, it's like Stratego in that in Stratego, the main thing that you're doing is you're trying to figure out the um, where your opponent's like pieces are, essentially. You're trying to figure out, you know, where are their strong pieces, where are their weak pieces, and working accordingly. And it's played on a map that's kind of like Risk, where, you know, everyone has their own starting territories, there's adjacent territories, and the game is played in five rounds and each round you place down your troops face down in like different areas and you know you can have them like aimed towards your opponents you can have them defending you can bluff with them there's a lot of like fun bluffing like mind games that go with your troop placement the strategy in it is very satisfying like the way that they do the turn order system is kind of cool like there's five rounds, five players, um, and every player will get to go once, like go first once over the course of the game, but you don't really know when you will have, which round you'll go first in and have like that advantage. It's a very fun game, good strategy game, not too long. Like it's probably probably about a 90 minute to two hour play time. Um, if everyone like knows the rules. Honestly, if everyone knows the rules, it's even shorter than that, but not too complex, not too heavy. I feel like it's just the right length, and it is definitely, like, a very fun game. How the hell do people do videos where they're just talking nonstop for, like, hours? It's crazy. All right. Battlestar Galactica. Boom. Tempted to put this in my all-time favorites, honestly. But I'll leave it at... It's probably going to end up at, like, the top of excellent. Battlestar Galactica. A long-form social deduction game based off of a hit TV show where everyone is either human or just looks human and they are a Cylon. You're on a ship in space. You're trying to deal with these fucking evil toasters that are coming at you gotta keep the ship alive you gotta make tough choices you gotta you know resolve all of these different crises that get thrown your way there's different roles you can play you can be the president who is in charge of like managing the population you've got like the admiral who's in charge of like the military tactics you have like engineers who keep the ship alive you got the pilots who do combat it's very it's a very long game has a very it has a very good like social deduction mechanic behind it um it is pretty heavy in the explanation and the gameplay and the games do take quite a while i would say usually a game took around three to four hours when i was playing it but this game more so than like pretty much any other social deduction game i've played has so much weight behind the betrayals and that is lovely in other games like avalon where it only lasts like half an hour it's like oh no he was a traitor darn i should have expected that but like in Battlestar galactica you've been slaving to keep this ship alive for like two hours and when your friend throws your ass out the airlock in like a sudden move of betrayal it hurts it <laughs> really does but it's also like a great game for that because like this game, more so than probably any other ones on the list, you can have stories from of, like, great 
overcoming like impossible odds or having to deal with shocking and terrible betrayal it's great for that that's why i love it so much bears versus babies i'm gonna say mediocre honestly don't really have a whole lot to say about this one it's really honestly this is like kind of a kid's game if, if anything they're just drawing cards um it's kind of like a munchkin style game i suppose where you're just trying to prevent one person from winning just drawing cards putting it on your bears to deal with the babies it's kind of goofy um other than that yeah honestly don't really have much to say about this one betrayal on the house on the hill now this is a game that i'm putting in lacking and i'm sure people will be annoyed about what am i saying everyone's gonna be annoyed about every placement here but betrayal on the house on the hill is a fun game i do quite enjoy it it is it has a tendency to drag at some points especially before the haunt happens and really the strength of the game is very heavily dependent on the haunt that you get so for people who don't know this is a game where you're exploring a haunted house with you and your friends um and some b level like horror movie kind of thing happens where suddenly like there's a serial killer or there's aliens or there's a cannibal and all this other kind of stuff that can happen and usually one person on from your group will be turned evil and will now be actively working against you and there's a bunch of different scenarios that play out in different ways now some of those scenarios are really fun some of them are not some of them have not been properly play tested and can lead to gimmicky nonsense that makes the game not very fun so this is it but honestly betrayal on the house of the hill depending on your you know a single game can be anywhere from up here to down here like there's a wide range of it and it's because of that inconsistency that makes me somewhat hesitant to play it because you could get like a really fun game or you could get just a very boring anticlimactic terrible game so putting it there i do yeah i would rather play it than these though um binding of isaac this is the card game by the way not the video game <laughs> i haven't actually played the video game this one is probably gonna go here right next to betrayal now it's a fun game where you are trying to upgrade your card to get like as many like victory points as possible you know you're getting like better items and stuff you're making your character better but this game suffers from the munchkin effect i played this game twice i have won both times not because i was good at the game but because other people got tired of preventing me from winning it's one of those games where everyone has the capacity to just screw each other over so much that the game really just becomes tedious it becomes a game of oh i have four victory points i need one more some guy plays you know the fu card and it's like oh no darn then he gets close and someone else plays the fu card on him and so on and so on until people eventually run out of fu cards or just get tired of playing the game which is unfortunate because this game does have some like kind of fun combat push your luck style systems it just really suffers because of that fu mechanic essentially um blockus blockus is ooh this is hard i'll put it at the top of okay for now blockus is a fun tiling game where you're trying to control as much territory as possible blocking off other people um hoping other people don't block you off you're trying to take up as much space on the board as well very it's a cool game it's kind of like risk in some ways in that like you really are just fighting over territory but you're not doing it with armies you're doing it by placing these like brightly colored glass pieces and for that it's quite fun
You know, I've convinced myself to move this up. <laughs> I would be down to play Blockus. Okay. Blood on the Clock Tower. It goes all the way to the top. Blood on the Clock Tower is a social deduction game, which honestly, maybe I should just rename this to the social deduction tier. But uh, it's a it's a social deduction game that's like Mafia and like Town of Salem, but with some key differences. Um, there's one player who is the demon. He has some evil people helping him, the minions. Everyone else is a member of the town. What makes this game really cool is that every person has a unique character. There's no generic villager role in this game. Like, you're not just, like, a good guy and that's it. Everyone has a power that impacts the game for better or for worse. There are some really fun, convoluted interactions that happen in this game. Every game of this will end up being different. There is so much customization that you can do with this game with inventing your own roles you this game doesn't suffer from the issue that mafia does where once you die your involvement in the game stops and you're just bored dead people in this game still have a role in the game they can still swing the game one way or the other and it's for that reason that like blow on the clock tower is an all-time favorite i played it probably well over 100 games just over this past like year in like quarantine wanted to do it more in person but unfortunately covid happened didn't really get the chance to do that but this is just a game has so much replayability so much in-depth strategy it's so much fun being either good or bad especially at the end of the game where the moderator or the storyteller as they call in this game walks everyone through the game so you can see all the insane stuff that happened like the guy who thought he was the virgin was actually drunk the whole time or like the investigator checked this person but they got poisoned so they got the wrong info which caused this to happen it's honestly just a wonderful game i don't actually know if the physical version has come out yet i really hope it does because i will definitely buy the physical version of it when it comes out even though it needs like a seven eight player account to even be playable which is unfortunate but still one of the best large group party games that you could um really have bloodborne um let's put this in okay i've only played this game once and it was a while ago i remember thinking it was fine it's a game where you get cards to upgrade yourself so that you can fight bosses and stuff um honestly don't really have much more to say about it than that it's a game like i would play it again if it was offered to me but like i've never really thought about going out and buying it for myself or anything like that so it's just okay foggle hmm. i'll put boggle here fun word game Make sure you have a dictionary on hand so that people don't <laughs> bring up BS words. Um, yeah, honestly, just really solid word game. Don't think I really need to explain Boggle to too many people. You have a grid of like five by five letters. You use those letters to come up with words. Just making sure that like, you know, the letters have to be adjacent to each other. So like in this one, you can see you can make like P-E-N or like S O Y for like soy. If people write down the same word as you, they get canceled out. So it's just who can do like the most words the most quickly. So for that, it's like a fun game. Bucket of doom. All right. Where do I put this? put it here and you know what i'm gonna get some other i'm gonna pull some other ones out so i can talk about them all at the same time where is super fight here is super fight
Yeah, I think those are the only two. So, Bucket of Doom and Super Fight, pretty similar games. Um, oh, hold on, there is actually... You know what, I'll leave that one separate, actually. So these are games where you draw cards from the deck and you have to use those cards to argue with the judge and explain like why your card solution is the best solution. In Bucket of Doom, you're put in a terrible situation, like you're stuck in a garbage compactor. You play some cards from your hand, like I have a solar-powered hamster wheel, and you use that to explain how you could get out of that situation. And other people do the same thing. Super fight, you are given, you create like a person with a superpower and you explain why your person could beat the other person's person in a fight. And this suffers from the same problem that Cards Against Me Andy does, in my opinion, in that it really is just the judge's preference. You can feel like you deserve the win and they'll just give it to the other person for whatever reason. It's better than Cards Against Humanity just because there's a lot more work you actually do on your end in terms of like justifying your answer and like why it's better or worse. So there is like some creativity in it, but it's one of those games that honestly, you're probably just better off being drunk while you play it. And you know, if you have to be drunk to play a board game and the game isn't exclusively like themed around drinking, it's probably it's probably just a lacking game or in this case a mediocre game because I didn't actually put any lacking all right then with that I am heading into the seas oh god I've already been recording for 45 minutes this is fucking hard all right I'm gonna try to go faster which is good because I'm going up with Camel Up. Camel Up, don't really have much to say about it. It's a racing game where you're just trying to have your guy be in the lead. There's some strategy that you... Well, no. Okay, so you don't control the camels, but you control how invested you are in them. So you basically bet a lot on like Camel Red, and you want to do whatever you can to make Camel Red win. But other people might want other camels to win. Or they might be more invested in Camel Red than you. So they're trying to push them, like, harder than you. So, I remember there... I've only played this once, so and it was a while ago. So I don't really have too much in-depth. I didn't love this game. It was okay. Actually, I'm going to drop it down here. I can't really articulate too much why I didn't think this game was all that amazing. Probably just because there was a lot of downtime between turns, like, in my playthrough of it. And, yeah. This is a game, though, that its spot could easily change if I play it again. I'm, like, refresh my memory. My memory. Ugh. Stuttering. My voice is dying because <laughs> I've been recording for 48 minutes now. God. Well. Shall we continue? Captain Sonar goes here. Captain Sonar is a real-time battleship, and it's as amazing as it sounds. You play in a team of four against another team of four. You got a captain who's calling out orders. You have a radar operator who's, like, tracking the other ship. You have the engineer that's trying to prevent you from blowing up. And the first mate that's getting your weapons online to blow up the other guys before they can blow you up. Super fun game. Best played with eight people exactly, which makes it a little inflexible to play with groups because, you know, you need to have like exactly eight um, for the best experience. There is some like, you know, wiggle room, but it's also a really fun game to watch too. So <laughs> that wouldn't be the worst thing ever if someone had to like just be a spectator. But yeah, Captain Sonar, super fun game, really action packed. It's like go, 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 go. Games can go. Games can last either like two minutes or like 20. And that makes it like really fun. Cash and Guns. Cash and Guns is. Okay. 
I'm going to put it here. Cash and Guns is a fun game where <laughs> pretty much you're like trying to get the best loot you can and everyone has these little phone guns and there comes a moment where everyone points their guns at each other and you know some people might shoot you that are pointing at you but they might fire a blank and you have a very limited amount of real bullets but you really don't want to get shot because getting shot is really bad for you so it's this fun game of like manipulation reading other people bluffing it's really got just like a lot of different factors like going for it um yeah it's in okay i don't love playing the game and i'm not entirely sure why i think it's because so much of what happens in the game is out of your control and it also kind of suffers a bit from the munchkin effect in that if you think one player is very far ahead, all the other players will just relentlessly bully them, which is not too fun, in my opinion. Catan. Catan is going to go in the fairly fun at the very top. Catan is a fun game. It is in basically every, you know, target in america it's basic how i've always thought about it is that it's like the euro version of monopoly and it's a really fun game honestly like there is a nice balance of luck and strategy in it where the better player will usually win but not always because there's a lot of like adapt adaptation you have to do the game is usually decided just by where people put down their initial settlements but the game can also play out really interestingly with all the bartering you can do with resources. And this game solves the Munchkin problem in a lot better of a way than the other games where the person who is furthest ahead has like a better engine. So the other people, you know, really hampering them kind of brings them down to their level where everyone can still win the game. But it's like closer. Um, and it's not just you're blatantly stopping them from winning the game most of the time. You can do that, but it's a lot rarer in like Catan. And yeah, Catan, fun game. Okay, Celestia. Um, put it at bottom of lacking. Celestia. Actually, no. It does not deserve to be this low. I'll put it here. Celestia is a push-your-luck style game where everyone is on a ship. You all have to spend cards to keep the ship afloat. At some point, someone is not able to keep the ship afloat, and everyone falls, and you get nothing. You have the option of hopping out before that point. But what if, you know, everyone continues flying on fine and it leaves you far behind? That's kind of like Celestia. It's a fun blend of strategy, gauging how what, how competent the other people are. Well, I say competent, not in, like, in terms of them playing the game, but the resources they have to keep the ship going. Um, yeah, it's a solid push-your-luck game. Reason why it's not higher up for me is that I don't like that it's only a push-your-luck game, really. I like games to have more to it than just that one mechanic, but it's ultimately a satisfying game. If you like Push Your Luck games, highly recommend Celestia. It's probably the best of them. Chameleon. What is wrong with Chameleon? Chameleon is a game where everyone knows what one word is except for one person the chameleon who doesn't know like what this word is and they just try to bluff like they know what it is everyone goes around describing the word in a way that's not obvious what it is but lets everyone else know that they know what the word is the chameleon just has to try to figure out you know what the secret word is main issue with this game is that it's really hard for the chameleon usually the chameleon usually wins because one of the other players just makes a really bad mistake in like a poorly thought out 
you know, clue to give. And then the chameleon just wins or like the chameleon just loses because they go first and they literally have no information to go off of and they just make their best guess. So yeah, like I don't recommend chameleon, honestly. I have a copy of the game and I wish that I didn't. Probably gonna cut that out. Just me drinking water. Hmm. All right, next up, Champions of Midgard. This is going in this range somewhere. I'm gonna put it here. Champions of Midgard, worker placement game themed after like Nordic, you know, Viking warriors and stuff. You fight like creatures from, you know, Norse mythology and stuff. Really fun game. It's got work, worker placement, dice rolling, combat. Honestly, just a really solid game. A bit long. Well, honestly, it's not even that long. Like, it's a longer game, though. So, play at your own peril. Clue. So, of all those, like, <laughs> generic board games that you get in, like, you know... Um, like Target or like wherever you buy board games. Clue is probably the best of them, I will say. Clue is going to go... Hmm. Here. Yeah, I'll put Clue here. Clue is a game that honestly could be much higher up but it has some few fatal flaws. I don't think I'm going to I don't I'm not going to explain Clue in depth cuz I'm sure everyone knows Clue or has heard about it, but for me the main issue with Clue is that it has some poorly thought out mechanics that really need to be just done away with completely. The whole movement system in Clue is terrible. The dice rolling really stands out as just why is this here? makes the game terrible the best part of clue though is definitely the um making like guesses as to like you know what was the person the murder weapon location but you can do really strategic things with that to try to isolate like what you think you know the murder like how the murder happened but you can also make inferences from other people and you know the suggestions that they make as to who the murderer is so there's this really fun mind game of like you listen to the friend go like oh it's mr mrs white in like the lounge with the wrench and it's like okay she probably has like one of those in her hand so she's using that to get information about one of the other two and then you know friend b over here gave her a card but we don't know what it was so we can kind of like rule out it's either the lounge or the wrench or the, you know, there's a whole, there's a lot of really in-depth strategy. It, Clue is a game that gets better, the better you are at it, I think. If you're playing a game of Clue with very smart people, it becomes a really fun, deceptive, cutthroat game of gathering information as quickly as you can. And I would not be surprised if the game ended within like three rounds. It can happen. Like, if you're playing with very skilled players. Um, but yeah, it's here because there are some game mechanics that unfortunately just bring it down a bit. I think Clue could be reworked to be a game that is up here easily. Codenames. Um, yeah, I'll put it here. Codenames is fairly fun you are it's a word game where you're trying to make connections between the words on the table so that your team can guess like the ones that you're pointing to um good a lot of it's a good amount of thinking my one criticism for it is that this is definitely a game where like the heavy lifting is definitely in the spy master's hands the person who's coming up with the clues everyone else for the game 
for everyone else the game is a lot more boring i would say because you're kind of just you're spending a lot of time waiting around while they're trying to think of something that's like good enough for everyone um and it can be very stressful being like the spy master so yeah okay concordia Hmm. Let's put it here. Now, people are going to be upset. It's right below Catan. They're kind of similar games in my mind in that they're resource gathering games on like a map. Um, Concordia is probably the better one in terms of like mechanics and like the strategy of it i haven't played i unfortunately don't have a copy of it and i haven't played it all that much if i did it would probably be higher than Catan. and it's more complex than Catan, which is good but in a way Catan's kind of simplicity is one of its like strongest aspects um so for that, Concordia, I think I'm going to put it just below it. It's definitely a game that I would love to play again if I had the chance. But I'm also not really thinking of purchasing it for myself at this point. Cosmic Encounters. This is a game, this is a game like Clue that has a really appealing idea that unfortunately it just doesn't all quite come together. Um... Oh boy. Um here. Yeah. I honestly feel sad putting Kelsmic Encounters this low because it has so much potential, but like Cosmic Encounters is a game where you're playing as like an alien civilization that is fighting against other kinds of aliens. There's so many unique races of aliens, all of them with their own strengths and weaknesses. So there's so much variety in the game. You, it's a lot of fun. You have this, you fight each other with like cards and with like armies and you make alliances all the time and you break them and you're really just constantly jockeying in position. It's a game that unfortunately has the munchkin effect, which I've been talking about where it's really just a constant fight to not let someone win when they're on the cusp of winning. But what makes it also kind of even worse is that there's not really a clear victory condition for this game either. You can win alone. You can win in a team. You can Literally everyone can win at the same time, which isn't really even winning. It's just a waste of time, in my opinion. Ideally, you want to win like on your own, but, you know... People don't want that to happen, but then someone might win in like an alliance victory, which is less satisfying, but like it's a victory, I guess. Some people don't consider it a victory. There's that whole thing. Like, so yeah, Cosmic Encounter. I wish I could put it higher, but like the rules just unfortunately make it kind of like very unsatisfying in the end game, really. Coup. Coup goes in mediocre, weirdly enough. But PJ, it's a social deduction game, kind of. Not really. Um, Coup is a bluffing game, like at its core, and that's all it is. The main... I played Coup. Um, I've also played it with the expansion, which I haven't put the expansion on here. The expansion definitely makes it better, but... Ku kind of has this fundamental issue with it's kind of like the game ds like the card game where someone could totally lie the issue is that you yourself have no incentive to call them out on that lie like if they're telling the truth you just hurt yourself so badly that it's not worth doing it and other people could also like you know call them out but they don't because it would be really bad for them if they were wrong so in coup you kind of just like you know you can lie and just hope other people don't call you out on it because they're really incentivized not to honestly unless you have a strong reason to do it then you shouldn't like call them out so Q 
Baku is really just a bluffing game, honestly. There is some strategy to it, but like at its core, I only see it as like a bluffing game. Which is why it's just mediocre, because I don't like that being the only mechanic. People think I'm being unfair to Ku, because there is, there is strategy in it for sure, in terms of like uh, doing some quick mental math of like who can like Ku first, what if they have this card, this card, whatever, but yeah, Ku is a game I would not really want to play. I have a copy, it was one of the first games that I got, and... I liked it up until I kind of realized it just has a <laughs> not much else going on. Cranium. <laughs> Can you hear my voice kind of just like lighten up a bit? Cranium is a fun game. Where am I going to put Cranium? I'll put it at the top. Okay. Yeah, I like Cranium. Cranium is a really fun like trivia style game with like different categories it has like it's one of those games where it's super like generic in like its concept but it does it quite well um you have the option to like perform and like answer trivia questions or do these other challenges to like you know try to move further ahead on the board you could like sculpt it has like a fun variety of stuff um, in it. So I would definitely put it in, like, okay. It's a fun family game. That's what it is. It's a family game. Cthulhu Wars. Ooh. It's going in here. Do I want to put it in very fun? Hmm. Put it here. It might be at the top of very fun, but we'll see. I could still move stuff around. Cthulhu Wars. This is probably the most expensive game I've played. Um, really cool risk style game where instead of like controlling nations, you control different cults, summoning all kinds of like eldritch horrors to like the battlefield, and each has their own like god that they can summon as well. That's literally just like a titan that you summon, and it's super cool. Like. And that titan is just like a juggernaut until it gets to like your enemy's titan and then you know it's like watching like a godzilla movie at that point where you have these huge miniatures just going at one another all the factions play differently so there's a good amount of replayability with this game there's expansions as well which make the game a lot interesting there's just so this game is very satisfying um it is complex but also not complex at the same time the core mechanics of the game are not too difficult to grasp but each faction has their own kind of unique spins on it so in that sense the game is a lot more complex because each faction kind of twists the rules differently and you have to be familiar with how they do that when you're playing against them really fun game long most games probably take like two or three hours unfortunately but I do quite like this game. It's a very heavy game, for sure. But yeah, very enjoyable. Dead Last, terrible. Next. <laughs> I'm kidding. So Dead Last is a game, God. It's, okay, it's a game that I broke, essentially. So Dead Last is a game where you are trying to identify like who is going to get voted out and if you vote them out then and if you are correct in your guess on who gets voted out then you get money and you're trying to be dead last or yeah like the last person alive issue with it is that um if you base it'll basically just turn into teams like getting rid of each other like if there's seven players me and i'll go up to three other people and be like let's make a voting block and get rid of those other three and then we do that and then they're screwed <laughs> and that's just how it goes so it's kind of like how survivor operates like the reality tv show but 
yeah it's essentially like it gets ruined by like that mechanic in my opinion who knows maybe there's like even more levels of strategy beyond that but i've only played the game once and have had no desire to play it again um dead of winter i feel bad ranking this one honestly it's gonna go on it's uh, okay on i'll say this full disclaimer you can totally ignore like this placement because I've only played, like, half of a game of Dead of Winter, and I think most of the issues I had with the game were just unique to that one experience. Um, it, the game wasn't really properly explained. We didn't actually finish it. It was super long and complicated. We are playing with, like, eight or t ten people. So there's a huge amount of downtime between turns, especially since everyone was learning the game for the first time. Um, it was confusing. Honestly, this is a game that its placement right now is just totally unjustified. And I would want to, like, um, play it again in the future. So, you know, I'm going to actually just, I'm going to take this out and put it, like, at the bottom of the list. Because I honestly don't even want to rate it. Because I don't have enough experience with that one, honestly. It's probably, it's, I would guess it's probably going to go somewhere up here. Um, if I get, like, an actual group together to play it. But, yeah. I'm not going to, I'm actually not going to rank it deception murder in hong kong this is fun very fun would i play this over a zoo and rokugan i think i would put it here now it's a social deduction game where one person the detective kind of knows um who the murderer is who is one of the other players and like what their key evidence was or whatever so everyone has these cards in front of them he operates in kind of like a mysterium style way of or like a seance sort of way i guess where he gives you like hints as to like what two cards it is the hints are ambiguous everyone argues and tries to figure out which card the investigator is like referring to trying to pick out who the liars are and try to get them out of the game very fun game um definitely a different social deduction game where it's more cooperative i feel like um but yeah fun game decrypto top of very fun decrypto is a game where it's a word style game where each team has four words that are hidden from the other team you have to give hints so that um, your team picks them in the right order hints that are good enough so that your team can guess them but not so good that the other team is able to figure out what your words are decrypto is really just a more complicated version of code names and it's in my opinion a lot more fun because there's a lot more strategy in between the two teams everyone is constantly thinking and like you know interacting with the game in some way because even during your downtime you could try to think through like the hints the other team has given to try to figure out what their words are it's definitely a very rewarding game like when you get the other, when like you have that light bulb moment and you figure out exactly what the other team's words are and it's like yes we got them like it's super it's super satisfying in that way is why i put it like so high up dear lord dear lord what a terrible game it's honestly worse than dead last god this is one of those games where it just has not seen enough play testing my experience with this game was i basically stood up and spun around in a circle for i think like 10 minutes and that was like the one takeaway i have from this game it's got rules that are really difficult to cleanly implement it's just not very fun it's a game where you like fight with each other about like you know you have to like rules lawyer with each other or you just like don't care at all just it's just not a good game <laughs> unfortunately do not pick this up in the store dice throne dice throne is somewhere um I'll put it here. I'll put it in very fun. Dice Throne is a fun game. I kind of think of it as like League of Legends meets Yahtzee. And that's honestly a pretty apt description. 
you're like rolling dice to like charge your ultimate that's why it sounds like league of legends <laughs> has ultimates in it to like fight other people and you knock them out in like kind of a battle royale style has a munchkin effect but it's good in this one i think where um you kind of have to think about you know who is the strongest player at the moment and you really go for them but you do it does it in like a very satisfying way because when you knock out a player they get knocked out which is why i think the munchkin problem is solved like you're all you can deal with a person permanently and try to just be like the last one remaining um there every class is different they all have their different strengths and weaknesses they're they play differently they're fun um it's got a good amount of replayability because of that and yeah they're coming out with like more seasons too with like different heroes so this is definitely a game that is worth like getting invested in i think diplomacy this this is a really this is a really hard one to place honestly so, so like i'll leave it here for now so diplomacy for people who don't know is a game that's essentially risk with no luck and it's all diplomacy meaning like you're going and talking to the other players it's a game that is very difficult to win by yourself. You have to make strategies and alliances with people. You have to break them. You have to do what's in your own best interest. We played this um, on 4th of July one year where we were all gathered around the pool. We gave us 20 minutes for every turn. We played in teams of two. So there are seven teams of two, so 14 people. Everyone was constantly going off to other groups, talking, you know, setting up strategies, breaking strategies, telling one person this, going to another person, saying something else. Ended up being a several hour long game. And it's re it was a really fun experience, I would say, overall. Um, it's one of those things that you definitely look back and you're like, that was a really fun time. I'm glad that we did that. That being said, I would be somewhat hesitant <laughs> to play Diplomacy again. Because for the people who are out of it, you are out of it. Like, you're kind of, like, stuck in the game when you've got, like, one little spot left. And it's like, well, I definitely can't win now, so <laughs> I guess I'll just be Kingmaker or something or try to be Kingmaker. Um, it's definitely a game that generates a story. And for that reason, it's a lot of fun. Like... I can talk, I could probably talk about, like, those backstabbing Frenchies, because, like, I played as Italy when I did it, and, like, I thought we were chill with France, but they backstabbed us, so I, like, counterstabbed them, and then Russia ended up just sweeping all of Europe, and it, it's just fun, honestly, to, like, kind of think about and, like, remember and talk about. So for that, I would definitely say I would give it at least a try once, but... I think it's one of those games also that's less fun in the moment and more fun afterwards because it's probably a pretty stressful game all things considered like there is a lot of in-depth strategy one thing that i found frustrating was we played this using like an app and um i didn't fully understand how it worked which led to some kind of botched plays where we thought we were doing something but it didn't actually end up happening the whole combat thing is kind of confusing, honestly, especially for newer players. So I'd be a little wary of that. But it's still leagues ahead of like risks, like combat system. Um, okay. Maybe I should, you know, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to pull out um, risk, wherever it is. Here it is. All right, I'm going to talk about risk right now, just because I've kind of like contrasted that game with risk um risk it's definitely lacking hmm i would put it here um cantal i'm gonna put cantal up lower i don't think it should be that high risk is a fun game it's a good first step in kind of like the war like genre of games but the combat is terrible the combat is 
what holds Risk back from being like a good game. You just late game, really whoever holds up on Australia or like Africa usually just just wins. The end game of Risk is just two balls of like 20 units attacking each other and you spend like 10 minutes just rolling dice over and over and over again until one ball dies and then the game is just like over and it's yeah risk risk is the most fun in like the first 15 turns and then after that it's kind of like well we see who's gonna win do we really want to drag this game out it has that kind of vibe to it um a game that is similar to risk spheres of influence which is going very high up here um how high up you say this is hard i think i'll probably leave it here spheres of influence is a game where it's risk but way better leagues better because the combat is fixed it has a lot more interesting combat system and victory system and also does cool stuff with like turn order as well. Spheres of Influence just has so many mechanics that make it such a more interesting game than Risk. Like you have, you know, production in terms of like military units, you have actions in terms of like how many turn order cards you can shuffle into the deck for each round. So some people just straight up have more actions than other people, which they can use to attack or reinforce or do all these other things. You have unique cards like you have nuclear missiles for example which is something that risk does not have like you don't get to a point where everyone just hold up in northwestern australia like you can't just nuke it at that point in this game you totally can <laughs> if someone is just hold up in like one little corner a nuke and then they're gone and there's a counter to the nuke too which there are a few counters of it in the deck but you know you might just get nuked and you can also defensive nuke and you can also do ICBMs and t like snipe little territories from people so they lose it. And it has a little bit of a munchkin effect in the final round because in the final round, you're trying to just have as many territories as possible. And, you know, one person will be in the lead. Everyone will know who's in the lead. Everyone's going to go after that person. And it's just a question of can they hold on long enough? Or if they do... And if they can't, who will take the number one spot from them? So it's a game that goes down to the wire in a much better way than all these other games with the Munchkin problem. Um, and yeah, it's honestly just, it's probably the best war game I can think of that's in like this kind of modern war setting with like a board and moving around troops and everything like that. Okay, do I want to move Diplomacy? No, nah, I'll leave it here. I'll leave that here. Dixit. Dixit is okay. Um, hmm. I'm going to do that. So Dixit is a game where you are given these really beautiful kind of surreal artwork like drawings um and you have to pick one and play it face down and you describe it in some way so you might have one that's like you know a king crying in an empty hall and there's like i don't know it's hard to explain it's like you're watching alice in wonderland or something and they're just taking random like scenes from that like these weird fantastical scenes you might find in the storybook and you have to describe them other people play cards from their hand that they think also kind of matches that description and then everyone tries to figure out like what the original one was people who guess right get points those who guess wrong don't and if someone guesses yours you get extra points really fun simple game Definitely not like super in-depth strategy or anything, but a, a fun game. I'm going to pull some similar games to it out right now, just because I feel like that's a pretty good way to go about this. I'm going to pull out Mysterium. So Mysterium, I unfortunately do not like as much as Dixit. And for that reason, 
going to put it here. Mysterium is like Dixit, where you have like these really beautiful cards and you kind of describe them in like, you know, abstract ways. Um, well, you're not describing them in this case. You're you're trying to solve a murder, like seance style, kind of like um, deception, murder in Hong Kong. But you're using it with these abstract like images to try to get people to guess the right killer, weapon, and all that. Um, main issue with my that I have with this game is that the person who is the ghost, the one who's giving out the clues, does the heavy lifting of gameplay here. Everyone else is kind of just waiting until they get their cards. Then you make a decision that lasts like it takes like you know a minute to make the decision you're right or wrong game moves on like a lot of downtime in the game which is why i don't have it very high i have an unopened copy of it because i played it with other people my mom got it for me for christmas and i've just never cracked it out or suggested it because i just don't think it's particularly that fun um obscurio on the other hand the third game made by this company is quite good it's better than dix it's better than mysterium um, I would put it, ooh, I would put it here, I think. Mm. I'll put it here. It's a game with a hidden trader. Whoa, social deduction game. Wild. But it uses, like, those same kind of, like, abstract card mechanics in fun ways. You have someone who plays as kind of like the ghost, but now there's a hidden trader involved. And there's just, like, mechanics that make it a lot more constantly interesting and engaging for everyone at the table. Because you have to figure out, like, who the trader is. And, yeah, it feels like your own actions. Your own actions definitely, like, impact the game. But it's not like in Mysterium, where in Mysterium, if one person is just terrible, everyone loses. Like, and that kind of sucks. Um okay so i think that was all of the d's okay well these aren't all exactly in order but i think i'm going to probably take a break here i've been recording for an hour and a half so i will leave off here take a break and maybe get back into this but yeah we have a nice little bell curve shape which is kind of cool i want to preserve that i guess for wait Oh, it's almost exactly a bell curve. Like, if I was to do like this, it would be, but, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I will continue this list. I still have a lot of games to get through. So, I will see you guys soon. All right. Well, I, I'm back already. Uh, same shirt. Not that you can probably tell. Uh, with my sparkling water, just because I felt like my throat was just dying. And I, I wanted to get make a little bit more of a dent because oh my god, there is so much here. So I'm gonna try to like power through this and go through as many as I can. Okay, so that I don't end up breaking this up into like six different videos. Hopefully, I can get it in just like two. I think right now I'm probably like a quarter of the way through. So we'll keep going. Epic card game. This is a really fun one-on-one, -on -one, um, kind of like Magic the Gathering, but like not with this huge like pool of cards. It's literally just like a small pool. Um, I would probably put this. Um, I, I felt like this was such a good game, but it's actually following surprisingly a lot. I'm going to put it here. So it's a really fun, like, just one-on-one, -on -one, you know, card game that is kind of like Magic the Gathering, where you're just, like, fighting each other with drawing cards from the deck. You can only do, like, one action per turn. You have to think hard about, like, which card you want to play. It's very quick, pretty easy to learn. Um... You definitely get better at the game like the more you play it just in terms of like learning the strategy and stuff but it's a super quick and easy game and i would not be opposed to playing it evolution um i'll put 
this year. Let me swap out the other one. Sorry. Evolution is a really cool game. It's a really nice thematic game where you are kind of evolving your creature in order to be the most optimal like organism in terms of getting all these different kinds of resources. If you just focus too much on like, you know, eating grass to get points that way, you're all nice and plump and the guy who's got his little <laughs> his like puma mane over there will just eat you and like get all the stuff you work so hard for. So, it's a really fun game. It's a really cool competitive game that has really nice theming around it um kind of repeating myself a lot here but honestly don't have too much to say it's been a while since i played it so i can't really go too in depth on like the mechanics and stuff of it but it was definitely like a fun game to play exploding kittens ooh, another very another target game as i call them exploding kittens goes here it is russian roulette with a deck of cards which is fun well not that russian roulette is fun but it's nice that it's not as permanent as russian roulette is um you're playing a game deck gets smaller there's a lot of tension in this game when you draw a card because if you draw a cat you can very well just be out of the game and as the deck kind of gets smaller and smaller and more and more of these little bombs get drawn you kind of ask yourself like do i play my skip card to like avoid drawing a card like like am i doing it too soon and like people can choose where to put bombs in the deck at times so you have to wonder like did he put it in just to mess with me do i want to draw this card is he more likely to try to hit the other guy a lot of cool and interesting strategy and mechanics in this game doesn't have as much replay value as i would like games play out pretty similarly i have like two of the expansions for it i believe yeah i played two of the expansions for it and it's definitely a really fun easy game to pick up you know super quickly um i just unfortunately think that it does lack in like replay value um and it doesn't have super in-depth strategy there isn't too much of a munchkin effect in this game which is kind of fine but yeah i wouldn't be excited to play exploding kittens but it's a nice quick game five tribes i have played this game once it's a kind of worker placement game it's got like a puzzly feel to it i'm oh man where do i want to put this i'll put this here played it once and it's been a long time can't really offer too much in-depth insight on this game i thought it was fun honestly <laughs> uh there's a lot it's a very thinky game in terms of like how you go about like doing your turns but yeah it's a fun game um lux is terrible how terrible is it it's worse than these two it's probably better than these two flux is a game where you pick up cards you play cards you try to play the most cards and then you win and that's it uh <laughs> it's not all that fun um it's super it has no theming at all it's like it's just so boring and there's a million different versions of flux which are probably more colorable like there's like a rick and morty version of it so i guess if you really like the show you could get that version of flux but the core game is just so uninteresting like there's no really kind of cool strategies that you can do has the munchkin effect where it's just like that guy's close to winning we'll just screw him over and hope that i win and everyone does that and it's like <laughs> an hour of that happening and that's why i hate it so yeah 
Um, Fun Employed. So Fun Employed is a game that is very similar to like Super Fight and Buckets of Doom, where you are playing as a person who is trying to get hired for a specific job. Like one person is the recruiter and they're like, we're going to need a janitor. And you have to explain why the former pop star with a heroin addiction would make for an amazing janitor. So it's one of those kind of like explaining games. But where I feel like it does a lot better than Bucket of Doom and Super Fight, and the reason why I'm putting it here, oh, here, is because you also, you can create a whole person to be. Like you go in for like a mock interview, you know, maybe you're playing big strong Russian bodybuilder who wants to be private security guy then you can really just go into it and like really get into your character. And if you're playing with people who are willing to like kind of get out of their shells a little bit, it is a very fun game because you get to see like just all these crazy characters and also to kind of spice it up, like the person who's hiring you for the job can also, um, he can also like play a card that describes your character that you weren't planning for that's like a detriment to be like, I am strong Russian bodybuilder. And the guy's like, ah, but I also see that you have a strange obsession with cats. And then suddenly it's like, ah, yes, duh. I do, I do love the kitten so much. I loved petting them and I have several cats. And you just have to kind of like roll with it. And it's kind of fun just seeing people adapt it and trying to turn those weaknesses into like newfound strengths. So honestly, the more I talk about it, the more I'm kind of like feeling like this needs to be higher up. So I'm going to put this, I'm going to put it here. It, it's in the okay game tier. I would be perfectly fine playing it. And there are cases where, you know, it's a really short game. It could be, it's really fun with like the right group of people. Um, if you're playing with people who are, you know, a bit more, you know, shy, it's probably not a great idea. It honestly just ends up kind of being like these ones. Um, but yeah, it has a lot more personality. Fury of Dracula. This is a great game. I quite like this game. I would be... I would put it here, honestly. It's a long game where one person plays as Dracula, and everyone else is a vampire hunter who is trying to track him down and kill him. So it's a one versus all game that's cool because you're given like a map of Europe, with all of these different interlinking cities and Dracula's in one of them. He moves around the board, but you can't see where he is or where he's going. You just try to pick up his trail, cut him off. And as a group, just kind of like really, you know, form like a net around him and then take him down. When you do fight Dracula, you have this pretty cool, it's like a rock, paper, scissors fighting style with like cards where you know, you're trying to figure out, like, what's he going to play? And you try to, like, do the one that counters that. But he might be thinking of that. Um, honestly, the combat's probably, like, the weaker part of this game. But the fun part is just picking up his trail. There's a game, I think it's called Scotland Yard, that is similar. But, and I haven't played that one personally, but I've seen people play it. And it kind of lacks the theming of this one a bit. And also just kind of, like, that fun strategic, that fun... Um, strategic flair with like the combat and like he can also leave traps on cities he's visited like different things that can give him alternate wind connections that they're not properly dealt with but yeah this is game i've only ever played as a vampire hunter i've not played as dracula but it seems like it would be very fun to play as dracula as well it's one of those games where like you could play on either side i think and be happy which makes it like quite nice game of thrones the board game. I'm throwing you in lacking because I've only played you once and I was not particularly impressed, I must say. Um, I would be willing to play it over these. I would be willing to play it over that too. I'll put it with this. Honestly, this is a game where I would say take my opinion on this with a grain of salt. I played it once. I found it to be too much downtime between turns. It would take people a while to f figure out like, what they were thinking of doing. It is a game where, unlike Risk, um, 
there is no um, RNG with like the combat, I believe. I think the combat, it's just whoever has more in that instance just wins. I think my playthrough of this game was really hampered a little bit because I think someone had to leave halfway through the game. So honestly, like, I think this game probably deserves to be much higher, but I can't know exactly where it would be without doing, like, another playthrough of it. So, uh, maybe, okay, I'll leave this for Dead, Dead of Winter as well. I'm just not going to review it because I don't feel like I have enough to go off of. Go fish yourself. Here's the thing. If I put this one as, like, fun, people are going to want to play this game with me. And I don't want to play this game with people. But it is also kind of a fun game. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you know you enjoy playing it, but at the same time, you also just really don't want to play it. Um, I'm going to put it... No, it's, it's too high here. I'll put it here. So, go fish yourself. This is a game where it's a game of willpower in that you're given cards that make you do ridiculous stuff. It's like go fish, but you might have a card in your hand that's like, until you lose this card, you have to keep one hand like on your face at all times. And that's fine. It's just a little inconvenient. But then they do stuff like you are not allowed to close your mouth at all. So you have to start like talking with your mouth wide open. And it's like, oh, it's terrible. It's terrible. But it's also fun because you see people doing like ridiculous things. The more bad cards that they have in their hand, the worse it gets. You have situations where it's almost impossible if that's like, Keep one hand on your butt, but also keep your elbows together and try to play the game. So you have someone who's like a duck or something just like trying to like pick up cards with their mouth so they can like still play the game. So you get ridiculous situations like that. It's a game that's helped by alcohol for sure. Um, <laughs> and with like a close friend group, I wouldn't play this with strangers just because like it would be kind of uncomfortable. And yeah, it's... Well, I have to put it higher, I think. I talked myself into putting it higher again. Uh, hmm. All right, it, it goes here. It goes here. Hmm, actually, it, no. it's going there, I would say. And it, it hurt. It's one of those games that like it hurts me spiritually to put it this high up, but it also just works, I guess. Please don't, please don't make me play this game. <laughs> uh, okay, Hanabi. Hanabi is very fun. I like Hanabi quite a bit. Um, okay, maybe it's fairly fun. It's somewhere pretty high up. I'll put it here. Hanabi is a really fun cooperative game where you're trying to work with each other to build fireworks together. The cool thing is that your hand of cards is actually facing outward, so you can't actually see your own hand of cards. You give people information about the cards in their hand and hope that they play the right ones and don't discard the right one and discard the wrong ones. It's a really, it's a good strategy game, good co-op game. Um got lots of replayability because you're not going to get a perfect score on your first try if you do you are you are mensa geniuses or whatever but yeah really good cooperative game um happy salmon happy salmon has go fish yourself energy honestly um you don't get it's a very like frantic chaotic game that doesn't make a fool of yourself it's not in-depth strategy. It's just like kind of like go, go, go. You're like getting out of chairs. You're jostling each other and you're trying to like, you know, win the game faster than anyone else can. It's a it's a fun time. Um, definitely like not a lot of strategy in it though or like high level thinking or gameplay. It's, it's another kind of like, you know, drunk game. So 
All right, Hero Realms is coming up, and because of that, I'm going to pull Star Realms with it because they're very similar games. Hero Realms. Goes. It's getting to the point where I have to do multiple clicks to do stuff. And Star Realms did look here. <laughs> Even though I said they're similar games. Uh, they're worlds apart. Um, hmm. I quite like Star Realms. I'll put it at the bottom of that slot. So these are deck building games where they're you like kind of like Dominion, where you start off with a small you know, boring base deck of cards and you're trying to acquire more resources so that you can be get better cards to kill your opponent. Difference between them is one of them is kind of themed in a more medieval way and the other one is themed in terms of like ships in space, like Galactic Empires kind of way. Star Realms theming is a lot cooler in my opinion and I've played it way more than Hero Realms. It's probably my favorite just like quick... 15 minute game super fast satisfying the more expansions you have for it the better um it has a strong amount of replayability very pick up and go like fast game to play and here are realms i just don't love the theming as much um it doesn't like the balance of the cards just doesn't feel as good to me there's different classes with their own different strengths and weaknesses, but I feel like some of the classes are just objectively better than the others, which hampers the replayability a bit because it just feels like you should pick the strongest classes. Um, so yeah, those are kind of my thoughts on those games. I would I would play both of them just easily, but I would definitely prefer Star Realms, I think. Though I would like to play Hero Realms like, more often in order to get a better in-depth opinion of it. Import Export, a game I have played one time and found it kind of boring. Got real backgammon energy to me. Um, it was a game that just didn't have really any flavor to me. I remember it having like kind of interesting mechanics. Um, but it's been a while since I played it. I came away from that game unimpressed, not willing to really play it again. Um, yeah, honestly, it's probably even too high up here. Ooh. No, it's not, it's not this low, though. Um, I'll put it here. Because I'd be willing, I would be somewhat willing to give it another shot, just to refresh my memory of it. But... Honestly, sorry, don't have too much to say about this one. Ink and Gold, another push-your-luck game like Celestia. It's worse than Celestia, I will say. Well, yeah, it's worse than Celestia. Um, let's throw this here. Now, Ink and Gold is a game where you're Indiana Jones style delving deep into you know, this, like, you know, Incan temple. And the further down you go, the more traps they are. If two of the same traps pop up, you die. You don't get anything. Um, you can choose to leave and only get all of the jewels up until that point. Um, the deeper you go in, the more benefit you get for yourself. Solid push-your-luck game. If you like push-your-luck games, Ink and Gold is a good game. I don't because I don't like games that only push your luck. But, yeah, that's why it's in the lacking tier. Not through any fault of its own, just because I personally am not a huge fan of just push-your-luck games. Ingenious. Ingenious is a really fun tile placement strategy game, kind of like Blockus. Um, I think it's better. Yeah, I do think it's better than Blockus. I would put it here, I think. Yeah, 
Mm. I would put it here. Now, it's a really fun game where you only get as many points as your weakest color, and there's six different colors. And you're really just trying to get the most value by like putting down tiles in like long rows kind of so like you could have like a row of stars and then you want to like add on another star at the end so you get points from all of those stars but also block it off so other people don't get points from stars but you also want to balance out all the colors i'm probably sounding like a madman just rambling about it if you haven't played ingenious before but it's a good puzzle game, really easy to pick up and learn. Um, I don't think it has too high, like, I don't think the skill ceiling is that high for Ingenious, but it's, like, high enough, I suppose, to make it, like, a entertaining game. Insider is terrible. Terrible. What is Insider? Insider is just where words, I believe, but so much worse that it just goes into terrible. You should not play Insider while where words exists. Now, what is where words other than an excellent game? Where words is 20 questions meets werewolf. And honestly, I did not think I liked 20 questions as much as I did before getting where words, but I quite like it a lot. It's a game where being a villager, just like a generic villager, is actually the best role, which is nice because it's nice to have the most plentiful role in the game be the best role. That's not to say it's not fun to be a werewolf or a seer either. They're also appealing in their own way. How this game works is the there's one person who's the mayor that picks like a magic word, which is like the word everyone's trying to figure out, and there's an app that helps you with this. One person is the seer, who is a good person, who knows what the word is, and one person is a werewolf, who knows what the word is, and is a bad person. The seer's trying to help the town without being too obvious, and the werewolf is trying to hurt the town without being too obvious might steer the line of questioning just enough so that they don't actually figure out what the word is, but not so obvious that they reveal they're the werewolf. Honestly, like the social deduction part of this game is kind of like the more minor component just compared to 20 questions. It's just fun trying to figure out like what these words are and the app has different levels. There's like easy all the way up to ridiculous. And Ridiculous is actually insane. You just get the name of, like, some guy that lived in, like, 1720 whose name doesn't even appear in the history textbooks anymore. It's, like, wild. Or, like, very abstract concepts, like, uh... Like, empathy. Like, how do you get to, like, empathy in, like, 20 questions, you know? Like, 20 questions is easy when you're thinking of, like, just household objects and stuff, like food, like bananas or something. But once you start to get, like, metaphysical, it becomes very difficult. Like, you don't know what questions to ask anymore. So, Where Words, super fun game. Quite enjoy playing it. Jaipur. Jaipur is okay. Um, Put it here. Jaipur is a game that involves you picking up cards. It's a one-on-one -on -one game, super quick. You're trying to get like, I think stacks of resources before like your clone like does. It's just a quick game where you're kind of like picking up cards. Um, I honestly don't have too much to say about it. It's a very quick one-on-one -on -one game, easy to learn, decent amount of strategy. Um, good theming. Really don't have much to say beyond that. Just one. Going way up here somewhere. Uh, I think I'm probably going to put it very fun. Yeah. 
I put it. Hmm. I feel like a zero is probably a bit lower. Yeah, I'm gonna put just one right here. Just one. Super simple game. Super simple. One person has a word that everyone else gives a clue for that has to be one word long. If two people give the same clue, they cancel out, and the person who's trying to figure out what the word is doesn't get to see them. That is the entire game, and it's a really fun game. It's a really fun and simple party game just off of that alone. Because when you're giving a hint for a word, like let's say Christmas is your word, you could put Santa. What if someone else puts Santa? What if someone else goes with the obvious one? So what's like an unobvious way to describe Christmas? If you go with like snow, you know, someone else might write snow. What if we take it a step further? Frosty. Frosty would be a good one. And if you aren't, and if your line of thinking happens to collide with, you know, another friend, suddenly the person who's guessing is left with a whole lot less options. Like, if you get to the point where you're trying to figure out your word based off of one clue, you're in a really bad place. So, it's fun. It's honestly more fun being, like, the person writing, thinking of a word to write down than being the person guessing. Being the person guessing can be a little stressful because you're like, I should know this, but I totally do not know this. And it's kind of fun playing with different kinds of people because you get to see very different thought process when it comes to people picking words. I like doing some words that are not necessarily the best, but are funny. Um, and also words that help don't help you at all in terms of like actually figuring out the word. But it's like, if you figure out the word, my clue is like, oh, if you know the word, this makes perfect sense. But if you don't, it's probably just going to mislead you. So just one super fun game. Good, huge amount, a large amount of rate to fail. Blah, 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 blah. The head stroke. Um, good amount of replayability. You know, different styles of play. Overall, fun time. Very fun time. Keyforge. Arguably, I probably shouldn't have put. I maybe shouldn't have put this in the list because I don't think I put Magic the Gathering in either. And this is made by the people who did Magic the Gathering, I believe. And the concept of Keyforge is really cool. The idea is instead of it being a trading card game, it's like a trading deck game where instead of buying a pack of random cards that you can take them out and put in your deck, each deck is made of randomly pre-assembled cards from three different factions. And I think there's like, there's quite a few factions in the game. I don't remember the exact numbers, but it's had a really cool concept behind it. Now, the issue is that it kind of avoids the trading card game problem where to be competitive, you need like, you know, $200 cards in your deck and like only the most meta decks are relevant and you just have to pay more money to even be viable in playing it. It takes that problem and just moves it up to the deck level. It doesn't actually solve that kind of complaint of like trading card games. The gameplay is fun. Um, it's not as good as like magic, I will say, but it's like, it's kind of like a fun, different kind of game. You know, uh, you have like two or three colors in your deck, but you can only use one color on each turn. So you might have like red monsters and yellow monsters, but you can only, you can choose to use either the red ones or the yellow ones. You can't do both. And all the different factions play differently. There's different synergies and stuff. Cool game. Um, is it a game I would be very invested in playing? No, not really. I have two decks, and I don't plan on buying any more. But I had a good time like, with my brief experience with this game. So I'm going to put you... I'll slot you in with the other kind of magic S game I was talking about. All right. I will... Okay. Okay, back in it. King of Tokyo. That is a lacking game. Hmm. He 
Yes. I'll just leave it here. King of Tokyo is a game where you're playing different kind of like kaiju. You know, you could play as like King Kong or Godzilla or like, you know, giant mech dragon and stuff. And you're all fighting to be King of Tokyo. Um, it's a King in the Hill style game where you want to be on top of the hill. If you are, you can hurt everyone, but everyone can hurt you. You get points while you're up there trying to either be the last monster standing or just have the most victory points by the end of the game. Um, it's fine. Little boring, I guess. It's like the best way to put it. You can get like upgrades for your monsters and stuff, but I didn't find the upgrades to be particularly interesting. The game seems to reward tactics that are the most boring tactics. Like you roll dice Yahtzee style to determine like if you get to attack people or heal or get energy. Or there's just like a one, two, three that's like you get three victory points or two victory points or one victory point if you have like three of them. And I think if you just took that out of the game, it'd be more interesting. Because I think the best strategy is to just go try to roll threes all the time. <laughs> um, and it's a very boring way to play the game. But I also think it's one of the more effective strategies. So if you were to fix that, King of Tokyo would be a better game. Ugh, my throat is so dry. <laughs> I've gone through, like, so much water and sparkling water, and it's not helping. It's not helping. King's Burger. Where will I put you? You're going very high up there, friend. You are a great game. Kingsburg, dice rolling game, really cool dice rolling game, I will say. Um, when you roll dice, there's like a bunch of nobles on the board. Um, you have to choose how to allocate your dice to get different resources from like the different nobles. You can put all of your dice into like, you know, giving them to like the queen so you get a really good benefit. Or you go for like more small benefits that might give you more exactly what you need. It's an engine building game with quite a few different viable strategies, especially if you have like the updated version of the game, I believe. Um, there's like tiers of buildings. There's probably at least like three or four or five different viable strategies to like go for that are fun and satisfying in like different ways. Um, but yeah, I quite like Kingsburg. It's an excellent game. Kittens in a blender. Oh, God. Uh, this is a mediocre game. I'm just dropping it at the bottom of mediocre. Uh, the theme is just heart-wrenching. I don't think people... If you were to say, hey, you want to play Kittens in a blender, no sane person should say yes to that just based off of the title alone. Gameplay-wise, it's not super impressive, honestly. It's just kind of a boring card game. I don't super recommend it. It's really just here to fill out the mediocre games level. Life. Life, just like real life, sucks. Um, like, how bad does it suck? Oh, God, it's worse than kittens in a blender. Is it terrible? Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just going ahead and say it. life is a terrible game. Um, super uninteresting. Like, it's the most like vanilla, like, experience you can have. There's nothing interesting about it. It's like, you could go to college and be in debt, but you also make more money, so that's cool. And you just roll your way like around the board. Super boring. I do not care about life at all. Loaded questions. It's definitely up here somewhere. Put 
put it here. Yeah, I'll put it here. Loaded Questions is a fun game. How it works, it, it's this is a family slash party game too. So like, it's not as like in depth or complex as these other games up here, but it's still a cool game because it's a really great game for getting to know people that you might not know too well. And it's a, another great game to play with people you know very well because how it works is um, when it's your turn, you basically read out a prompt. That's like, what is the worst thing um, that could happen to you like on a weekend or something like that and everyone writes down what their response to the question would be and then you have to try to pick who said what among like you know the other people you're playing with so i played this game a lot with like my family and it's always kind of fun like i usually write down just ridiculous stuff and everyone else at the table is just like oh yeah that's a pj answer because it's just like so off the wall and you really see people's personalities come out through this game in like a really fun and cool way and you're rewarded for knowing people it's fun it's funny and it's definitely worth like giving it a try lords of vegas this is a game i've played once I played it a long time ago, and I just found it very boring, unfortunately. This is a game that I would probably want to play again in order to have like a better opinion of it, but I just remember being so thoroughly unimpressed with this game that like I, I just don't have any desire to play it again. So maybe I'll even, uh, I'll, I'll put it over here because it's a lot of my Take this rating with a grain of salt again, because I don't even remember why I disliked the game so much. But yeah. Lords of Waterdeep. This game is okay. I'm going to put it here. So Lords of Waterdeep is a worker placement game. Um, I think Waterdeep is like D&D &D or something. Um, I played it once, and it was just okay, honestly. Didn't really think super highly of it. I feel like Midgard does what it does just better. Um, I would need to replay it to have my exact grievances kind of with the game kind of like nailed down, but yeah, I just find it to be okay. Love it or hate it. Um, I'm gonna actually know this. I'm gonna look up love it or hate it rules super quickly. <laughs> Just because I'm not entirely sure. This is not the version that I had, but. Let's see. Oh, okay. Yeah, I do remember this game. Um, this game is pretty similar to um, Loaded Questions. Um, it's not quite as good as Loaded Questions. I would probably put it here. Now, um, this one is similar to Loaded Questions in that it really depends on how well you know the people. And the game is more funny than like you know, engaging on like any strategic level or whatever, because it's a party game, it's a family game. But yeah, you pretty much just give people like situations and you have to decide if they would like love it or hate it. So it's kind of like a cool way to like, you know, give people interesting hypotheticals and try to predict which side they would fall on. So yeah, it's an okay game. Love letter, ooh, now this is a game. Um. Love letter, I'm going to put here. Love letter is a fun game. I will say that. Love letter is a game where it's super quick. It's like an old maid style game in a way where everyone has one card in your hand. You pick, draw a card. You choose which one to play. All the cards have different effects. You're trying to be the last one standing. Um, has a... It's a very simple game, super quick, 
goes up to four people. Um, and it has a surprisingly, like, just in-depth amount of strategy. Like, the skill ceiling isn't too high. Like, I think you could probably play, like, five or six games. And if you're, like, a pretty good board gamer, you would probably figure out the depth of the strategy. But it's still a really, like, fun and interesting game, I would say. And, like, it's really quick, too, so you don't really lose anything by playing it. So. Mad Cow. This is a game that I was not a huge fan of. Um, probably going to go somewhere in this tier. Let's put it here. This is a game that works kind of like President or like all those kinds of games where like you play it in multiple rounds and people's positions in it sh kind of shift. The higher up you are in the hierarchy, the more it's stacked the game is in your favor. Um, the art style is kind of weird. I wasn't a huge fan of it. It's like some of the cards are kind of funny. I think there was like a duck in the game or something like that. Um, but yeah, I just wasn't super impressed with it, honestly, I suppose. Um, okay. Mafia. For so <laughs> this isn't actually the game. I just put in Mafia as like the card game. Um this is the one where you know there's good people and then there's the mafia. You vote people to get kicked out. Uh mafia kills people at night. Mafia, I have played a stupid amount of it, like with various mafia websites or with cards in person or games with mafia elements or like Town of Salem. I think you <sighs> I love social deduction games, so Mafia is definitely going to be quite high up here. And put it above Dead Stirling. But yeah, it's Mafia. I love social deduction games. There's so much customization like that you can do with Mafia. You can invent your own rules if you want to. I prefer being good than bad, but both rules kind of have their own different appeals. And yeah, I'm not going to say no to a game of Mafia. Masquerade. I'm going to drop Masquerade to three. Because I played Masquerade once. And Masquerade, it has similarities to two in that you're trying to gain money. Different rules allow you to gain money quicker. You can lie about which role you have. Um... And it's really a memory game, I believe. And not a super fun one, honestly. I've only played this game once, but I remember being thoroughly unimpressed with it. I watched a different group of people play it, and it seemed a lot better then. But it seems like largely just like a game where you're keeping track of cards and you're trying to maneuver in position. Which I do think it's better than Coup, because the bluffing isn't as um polarizing in this game but yeah i wouldn't be too excited to play this game again honestly either mastermind um this game is lacking um well actually it's probably even mediocre I'll drop it off here. Mastermind, it's a logic game. Super quick. You're just, really, this is a one-player game. The other person doesn't really participate in it all that much. Um, there's probably, like, an optimal way to play this game that you could just look up. And, yeah. Honestly, I don't really have much to say about Mastermind. Masterpiece. Um, kind of similar. I don't really have too much to say about it. It's kind of like bidding for artworks. Trying to figure out, like, the value of it. Um, it's one of those older games. I wouldn't be too excited to play it. Um, yeah. Eh, that's too low, honestly. I would probably put it... I'll put it here for now. Not too excited to play it. Um, I It's been so long since I played it. I don't remember what it goes wrong. 
I think there's just a lot of downtime between turns. Strategy's not too in-depth. Just not super interesting. Interesting. Among Us. Wait, no, this is Menace Among Us. Um, <laughs> that does play a big joke. Uh, Among Us is a social deduction game, much like the video game. Um, totally different company, by the way. Has a good amount of, like, strategy. It gave me, like, Battlestar Galactic vibes, but it was a lot lighter. Um, had some pretty interesting roles and stuff in it. Like, all the characters had, like, different decks and stuff, and were able to do different things. Um, I didn't love this game. I thought it was fun. I would want to play this more, because I've only played it once. And I think with replays, my opinion of it would probably elevate. But, I'll just leave it. Mm. <laughs> no, I'm not splitting hairs. I'll leave it just about to be a hidden. That's where I am now. Monarch. Monarch is a Euro game where you are trying to buy cards of a specific color to get yourself victory points. Um, Monarch is a fun game. Um, uh, it's fairly fun. I would be more than willing to play this again. It's been a while since I've played it, but I have played a few games of Monarch. Has a good amount of replayability. Um, probably not super high amounts of replayability, but yeah. Not too much to say about Monarch either. Monopoly. Where do I want to put Monopoly? What games is Monopoly better than? No. Alright, I think it goes pretty much at the bottom of Black King. So Monopoly is one of those games where there are all there's like a million different ways to play Monopoly because it's the one game that no one reads the rule book for because everyone thinks that they know how to play and they almost all get it wrong. So honestly just talking about Monopoly would probably be like a whole video in of itself. If you play Monopoly properly, it has its flaws, but it's not as bad a game as, like, everyone makes it out to be, where it's like, yeah, I broke up my Monopoly game into, like, three three-hour sessions, and, like, we still did win, and it's miserable. That's if you're playing the game wrong. If you're playing the game right, it's shorter. Um, it's just so boring at this point that, like, it's pretty uninteresting. So Too much of the game is dependent on luck. There are very few meaningful choices you make in this game. You roll the die, you buy whatever you land on, like, 90% of the time. Like, it's very rare for not buying something is the correct play. You have really no agency over the dice rolls. Like, it's a game that pretty much, like, plays itself. Um, the only real strategy in it comes into you investing your resources and how you choose to do that. And for that reason alone, it makes it above like some of these other games munchkin is a terrible terrible game and you can tell that because i have constantly referred to something as the munchkin problem and munchkin is the reason for that the munchkin problem refers to pretty much just you know someone's close to winning someone plays an fu card cool now they're no longer close to winning someone else gets close to winning you play an fu card on them now they're not close to winning. Rinse and repeat until eventually someone just runs out of the right cards to play. That's Munchkin. Not super interesting. Most games end with people having an alliance just to have someone that they think is less terrible win the game just so they want the game to be over. Because ending the game is, like, desirable at that point. If you ever find yourself playing a game and you want it to be over, it's not a good game. Like, well, okay, that's not entirely fair because there are games where you could be just like down and out like really bad you know you're not gonna win and i guess you kind of want it to be over but like munchkin everyone just wants the game to end it's not fun doesn't have like the mechanics of it aren't even like as interesting as like uh the finding of isaac game which was fun like Finding of Isaac is just this with a much better. So honestly, it probably doesn't deserve to be the top of the game. Eh, whatever. Munchkin. Don't play Munchkin, please. 
I would not consider playing Munchkin if it was like brought out. Near and far. Really cool game. Um, made by the people who did Above and Below. I am tempted to put it up here with it. Hmm. Yeah, I'll put it. I actually will just leave it with Above and Below because I think they're they're different games, but they have some of the they have the same art style. And they have the similar kind of storytelling aspect woven into the game in like a really cool way. Um, it has a fun area control slash building up synergistic cards in the same way like that Monarch does. Um, lots of different ways to try to win a game. There's like rushdown strategies. There's like really eloquent like engine building kind of. And you play it in like a campaign style with like the same character going to different maps, lots of different maps to kind of change the game in like small ways. Um, yeah, really fun game. Quite like Near and Far. Um, not alone. Not alone. Cool. Another great game. Um, I like talking. I like talking about the games up here a lot more than the ones kind of in the middle. Um, and even talking about terrible games is like pretty fun too, I suppose. So, um, not alone is somewhere in here. It's my. It might have fallen a bit actually. I would put it here. Not alone is a very fun game. It is a one versus all game where one person plays like this alien monster that's kind of like hybridized with like the planet and everyone else is playing a survivor who is trying not to get eaten up. Everyone has a hand of cards starting off with five cards and each card is like a different ability, some good, some less good. And the monster is trying to pick out which card he thinks that you guys are going to play and then play the sim same card from his hand. And if he catches you, it's bad. And there are ways to kind of he can uh, he has his own powers that he can use to try to like manipulate which cards people can play, like which locations he could go to, what information is available to him, and it's this really fun cat and mouse mind game kind of thing, where if you are one of the survivors, it feels brutal at the start, but over time you start to gain ground, and most games really come down to the wire it's like if the monster catches like one or two more people he wins if he doesn't the survivors win most games very high tension a lot of great strategy it is a game where you can get bullied off a lot of the times one person will have an absolutely miserable experience with this game because the monster will just relentlessly bully them it's like when someone is just so in your head that they're basically like renting out a room at that point. Like that, and even then it's not the worst feeling ever, but it can definitely feel like kind of brutal playing this game at times. So all in all though, it's definitely like really fun game. Not too complex. You can learn it pretty quickly and the games don't last too long, but and if you're a survivor, there's this really fun, like, sense of camaraderie you have with one another, like, and you're also kind of just like, yeah, screw the monster guy, like, whoever's playing the monster. You can also get creative with it as a monster and, like, role play is, like, creepy, which my friend did, which my friend did one time, and it was pretty funny, but also a little, like, off-putting, too. But I, like, wouldn't change it. I, I liked that he did do that, because it made, it definitely brought the game up to another level. Uh, yeah, I quite like Not Alone. Ooh, I think this is Nyctophobia, which means fear of the dark. Um, okay, this is a game that I would say is okay, but it's super cool, like, game design. It really is. So, how this game works is that one person plays as like the vampire and everyone else plays as like survivors and they're in like this maze on like the board where 
it's dark and you can't see in front of them. How the game does this is that everyone but the vampire is blindfolded and they can only move their pieces around by like touch, by like feeling out like the area directly next to their piece to try to get like a sense of the maze. And you have to kind of build this mental map in your head, keeping track of it if you're the survivor and you're trying to go in and get like the car keys or something and make your way back out of the maze and back to your car. Um, the vampire is trying to, you know, snack you guys up. And it's a case where if the vampire is kind of hostile, he could win super easily. Like, But it's not a competitive game. This is definitely like an experience kind of game where like the vampire is supposed to balance it out. Like ideally you want them to be kind of like teetering on the edge of like defeat, but you don't want to just like end the game immediately. Um, it reminds me of... Uh, in Diary of the Wimpy Kid, when Rags plays with, like, Roderick, uh, Roderick wants to play, like, D&D &D with him, and, well, he wants, Rod well, he doesn't want this. I think his mom forces Roderick to play D&D &D with him, and he's, like, the DM, and he's, like, okay, you and your band of loser friends fall in a pit and die in the end. Like, that's how this, uh, nyctophobia could go if you have kind of, like, a, a vampire who doesn't really understand his role in it. Um... But it's definitely like a really cool conceptual idea for a game and i'm glad that it exists i personally just am really bad at mentally mapping out places like i use google maps basically whenever i'm driving because my sense of direction is so just whatever that i like to rely on that so this would not be like a fun game for me i liked being the vampire i would hate being stuck in the maze though and that's why i'm only putting it okay it sounds like a cool idea, though. I highly recommend you try it at least once. Once upon a time, this is a fairly fun game. Um, let's put it here. Once upon a time is a storytelling game where you have a bunch of story cards in your hand, and uh, you kind of like improv a fairy tale story in a way that you're able to play relevant cards. So I could be like. Um, once there was a beautiful princess who fell in love with an ogre who lived in a swamp and I would play the swamp card from my hand. The goal of the game is to like dump all of your cards out of your hand. And once someone no longer has any cards, the game ends. But if you're telling the story, like there was once a beautiful princess and then someone hears you say princess and they play the princess card from their hand, then they have control of the story and they can spin in whatever direction they want to. What if one of their cards is like dragon? Well, suddenly that princess is off to fight a dragon. And it kind of creates this really interesting improv story that more often than not dissolves into nonsense. Um, you're supposed to try to keep the story coherent and logical, but more often than not, it just goes completely off the rails. So definitely a fun game. Um, it's one of those games where you have to play it with the right people in order to get like a good experience out of it. If you're playing with people who are super try hard and like rules lawyer all the time, it's not going to be fun. It's going to just devolve into arguing and bickering. If you can play with people who are good at improv, that would probably be the ideal thing because you just get really interesting stories out of it. Onitama. I will put Oni. It's okay for me. We'll put Onitama here. This hurts. Cosmic Encounter being this slow actually hurts. Okay, I have to move it up a little bit. Move it up here. Onitama is kind of like chess. Um, it's cool. You are trying to capture the enemy person's king. There are five cards on the field. Two of them in front of each player. And one of them in like the middle on your turn you move one of your pieces according to the movement pattern dictated on your card so like your piece can move like a knight or it can move like three spaces forward or it can move like backward like you play that card and then you take the one in the middle so there's only five different possible moves that you can make you have to think about when you play a card what is your opponent gonna do in response it's a really fun game if you like chess you would love this game um i'm 
kind of ambivalent towards chess. I like the idea of it, but chess is a very high skill ceiling, and I like to win games. So I, I, but I also don't want to invest that much time into like chess. Did I put chess in here? Chess isn't in here, um, but chess would probably also be somewhere in the okay range. Pandemic. pandemic right here pandemic um team of scientists trying to save the world from disease you know co-op game kind of fun doesn't have too much replayability i think um it i feel like when i play this ultimately it just kind of devolves into like everyone telling each other like what to do um so yeah it's just okay um do have Pandemic Legacy down here. I'll boggle the bottom a bit. Patchwork. I think I'll put Patchwork at the bottom. It's very fun. Um, actually, no, it's above Diplomacy. Patchwork. I'm going to move this over there on your pick, too. Sorry, AJ. Yeah. Okay. Patchwork is a two-player game where you're trying to create, like, this quilt, fitting patchwork pieces on it in kind of, like, this Tetris-style way. It is a bit... It has, like, slight engine builder components, but it's a very good thinking, like, strategy game. Just in terms of like if i do this my opponent does this if i do this my opponent does this so i quite like um patchwork it has very good level of strategy very pretty game a lot of it's very satisfying like making your quilt quilt together nice and snug overall really good game not too long two players nice simple game power grid power grid is a pretty whatever game to me it's okay. It's um I think it's like a Euro style game where you're just trying to like make the best power grid possible. I find it to be pretty whatever. Um that's not to say it's bad. It just isn't good, I would say. And people might fight me on that, honestly. Like I'm just not super interested thematically in like the idea of the power grid. Um doesn't it didn't have to many like interesting components had a good level of strategy but it also wasn't like mind-blowing levels or like really interesting strategy but yeah honestly don't have a whole lot to say about power grid quarto and quicksell these are games for smart mensa people probably um quarto the better of the two i would put quarto Porto is a really cool game. You have a 4x4 grid, and there are 16 pieces of the game, and they're all unique pieces, because each piece has four different um, characteristics to it. They could either be round or square. They could be dark brown or light brown. They could be um, short or tall. And finally, they could be hollow or not hollow. Now... How the game works is you're trying to get four in a row um, pieces that share one attribute with each other. So four pieces that are all short, four that are all brown, four that are all hollow, etc., etc. The trick is, and what makes this game interesting, is that you choose what piece your opponent is going to play next. So if I just put I put down a piece that my opponent gave me. And then I hand my opponent a piece for them to play. If I hand them the wrong piece, they could do four in a row and immediately win the game. And this is a game where you're really thinking down the line in terms of like, where do you put the piece you were given? And also, what piece do you give your opponent? It's a really in-depth game like that. Quixo is similar. 
Quitso is tic-tac-toe, but in a 5x5 five five grid where you're trying to get like five in a row. You pick up when you take a piece you like flip it so that it's like either an x or an o and then you kind of move it around i don't like it as much as quarto um the the strategy of it doesn't really click with me as much um i would probably put quickso in the okay tier somewhere put it here with kind of the whatever games um yeah honestly don't really have a whole lot to say 12th terrible moving on um i'm not gonna well i'll, I'll dwell on it a little bit um it's like life but more painful life is boring 12th is offensive in how annoying the game is Twelfth is a game that was designed by a five-year-old for a five-year-old, I feel like, where there's like all these fun, quirky rules that are actually terrible in implementation. Um, I don't recommend this game to anyone. I'm sorry, I strongly despise Twelfth at this point. Like, get drunk out of your mind and take this game not seriously at all, and you can have a good time. But... This is not a game that should be taken seriously or, quite frankly, taken at all. Race for the Galaxy. Hmm. Oh my god, at some point I got to R. I think I'm halfway. <laughs> oh man. Alright, Race for the Galaxy. I like Race for the Galaxy. It's a satisfying engine builder. Um, the game's feel slightly too short um it feels like every game ends just before it begins which i know is often the case in engine builders it just feels a little more egregious in this one for some reason there are it's a really good strategy game at times it feels like you are too much at mercy of like what you draw like you don't have quite enough control i feel like some strategies just do not seem to work depending on which expansions you have like in the base game i feel like military is just not a good strategy flat out like consume strategies just blow it out of the water like all the time so for that reason i'm not going to put it super high um it's like a satisfying game though i'm gonna put it like right here mm he says moving it up even more um i think there is fine yeah um raw raw is a cool game i like raw um raw is going in the fairly fun tier for sure um yeah i'll put it here raw is a tile auctioning game where you're pretty much bidding to get the pieces you want. If you bid too much for a piece that you only kind of need, you might screw yourself. Um, has good replayability. There's a good amount of strategies you can do in it. Fair amount of strategic thinking. Um, do quite enjoy this game. It feels like it runs on a little long at times. Some strategies just seem way better than others. Some may not be super balanced, but it seem, it's a it's a fairly fun game. Don't have too much to say. Red Dragon Inn. Um, probably going to put this down with Game of Thrones and Dead of Winter as I don't feel super qualified to talk about it. Got through maybe half of the game. What Was drinking while we played it because it's called Red Dragon Inn. So I would think that would be, you know, what you would want to be doing. But it doesn't really seem to mesh too well with like the drinking component. I feel like most drinking games really poorly incorporate drinking like into like just how the game works. Um, Red Dragon Inn didn't really seem to mesh too well with that, but yeah, I would want to play it more, I think, before I even give it a review. Santorini. Santorini is fairly fun as well. Santorini can go here. 
it's a chess style game where you're trying to jockey with position in terms of getting your guy to the top of three-story building before your opponent does or before they block you and they'll cap it off um really cool positional strategy game it's fine there's like special powers you can use it's even fine without the special powers which is to say it's got quite a good concept it is one of those games where i feel like if you play it enough and if you're smart enough it becomes less good because it definitely seems like it doesn't have a high enough skill ceiling overall in order for it to be super satisfying but then you throw in the powers in and maybe they do but i feel like it's a game that could become solved with enough time and effort categories i like categories it's also a fairly fun game um where am i putting these categories i'll put it hmm. okay hold on. i'm gonna change this a little bit okay i feel better about that um yeah categories i'll put in the fairly fun game i don't actually I feel like okay hold on sorry i'm messing with this a lot okay this is how i'm leaving it categories is fairly fun um everyone most people know how to play categories i'm not going to explain it um it's just a fun party game um very simple rules very quick um yeah doesn't overstay its welcome Scrabble. I fucking hate Scrabble. I'm probably going to lose that. Um, Scrabble isn't a great word game, I will say. Um, I know there's like a Scrabble World Championship, but like Scrabble is a game where like people just get so invested into it. They like read the dictionary and whatever. Like it takes so much effort to be good at Scrabble. And I feel like the intent of the game goes against its practical application. And by that, I mean to get good at Scrabble, you got to learn all these two letter words that no one has used since like the 1700s in like Scotland. Or something like that words like uh aq or some nonsense like that it's like a really high scoring word that no one ever uses in day-to-day -day life so it's not really even like a word in that sense but like it just gets you points because it's in the scrabble dictionary so i did not like the game for that reason um yeah scrawl um scrawl where's telestrations uh-oh, Telestration's not here. Uh, did these get like out of order or something? Or did I not? Darn, I don't think I put Telestrations in or something. Maybe I did and I'm just blind. Oh no, here it is, I'm blind. Okay, I found it. Um, Telestrations and Scrawl. And scroll. These are the same game. These are both basically just the game of telephone, but you flip between writing down something and drawing something based off of what was written. And then the next person guesses what they think the drawing was and so on and so on. Same game. Between these two, I would recommend Telestrations over Scrawl um, just because the quality of components is better in Telestrations. Um, they are both quite fun games though, I will say. Um, if you have like good artists with you and like just terrible cards, this is a game that gets really, this has huge potential for just being hilarious. Like I've had some pretty like real, like fun, just memorable games in the past, which is why I'm putting it like so high up. Very simple party game. Scythe. <laughs> it's not playing there. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's climbing up. Scythe. My up. Like a companion to Spheres of Influence. Better or worse? I'm going to put Scythe here, I think. Yeah. Scythe, really cool thematic strategy game. Um, runs a bit long. It's a longer game for sure. Good amount of strategy. The factions are all different. It's fun to play different factions. 
Um, really satisfying, like, engine builder-esque game. The combat, I feel like, is okay. It's, um, it's nice that the combat isn't, like, too prevalent in the game. Um, because I know some people don't necessarily like in games, like, having to attack other players. I don't, because I feel guilty. You know, like, when you hit someone, like, when they're kind of, like, weak, it feels a little bad. Um, Scythe's combat is, like, kind of an interesting position. I feel like it could have been done a little better. I don't know how. But I do feel like the combat is probably the one thing that is a little lacking in the game. Especially with, like, how workers can sometimes interact with combat. Where, like, you can leave workers with, like, sacrificial lands out in the field to block people. So that if people try to go through there, <laughs> they get less popular. Which is kind of an interesting unintended mechanic. But I don't really feel like that's the way it probably should play out. Um, but yeah. Scythe, very good game. Secret Hitler, another really good game. Um, it's definitely an excellent game. Mm, is it though? Yeah, it's an excellent game. I would put Secret Hitler. Here. Arctic Scavengers is a little. Yeah, I'll put it here. Secret Hitler, fun game. Um, it's really nice to accuse someone of being Hitler and it not being on the internet and not it being an exaggeration. Um, yeah, just really fun social deduction game. Has a really cool mechanic with like the policy cards. There is an element of luck in it, which is nice. That's what makes it kind of refreshing from like Avalon where, you know, sometimes someone could just get unlucky. Um, has an instant lose mechanic that I don't know how how fond of it I am like I always get super stressed out playing secret Hitler when I have to choose like who I want my chancellor to be and I have no clue who Hitler is um because you could just straight up lose the game at that point so that's like not the most fun but I still think it's a really fun social deduction game secrets another kind of social deduction game we're trying to figure out like who's on your team Secrets has honestly dropped for me, like, a little bit. Um, hmm. Put it here. Yeah, Secrets is fun. There's three factions, the two main ones being the CIA and the KGB. You're not sure who is on your faction. Um, you're trying to figure that out by playing different cards. You can give people cards that... If they're on your faction, you want to give them cards with points. And if they're not in your faction, you want to shoot them. A lot of cool role swapping and like information manipulation that goes on over the course of the game. It's intel gathering. You have the hippie faction, which is pretty funny to me. They're trying to, um, if they have the least amount of individual points at the end of the game, then only the hippie wins, which is kind of fun. It's kind of like a jester kind of thing. Um, but yeah, Secrets, fairly fun game, pretty quick. Um, I know people I've played it with haven't had like the most positive reactions to it, just because it's like another social deduction game. That's all I want to play, but I think it's still worth it. Sentinels of the Multiverse. Okay. I've only played this game a few times. Um, would like to play it a bit more. drop it here sentinels of the multiverse is a game where it's a cooperative game where you are fighting against like a boss and you can play a hero all the heroes have different decks and different kind of gimmicks depending on like what expansions you have there's like a lot of different fun heroes and different ways to play the game so it has a lot of replayability um and yeah it's just a fun cooperative game sheriff of nottingham this is a game that not through any fault of the game i think i just do not like this game um because it's kind of like a bluffing game and i personally just don't like bluffing games i won't go as far as with coup to say that it's an inherent flaw in the game in sheriff of nottingham i just particularly 
don't have the most fun playing this game, I think. Um, yeah. I would rather play this over Scrabble, I think, though. Not over Monopoly. Yeah. Weird. Um, Sheriff of Nottingham is honestly, like, not that bad a game. It's just really not my cup of tea. Uh, yeah. Skull King. Skull King is a fairly fun game. This is just a trick-taking game with a fun flair. Um, well, a, thumb, a fun theme, I guess I should say. Um, really quick, really simple to pick up. A lot of fun. If you like trick-taking games, you will definitely like Skull King. Um, mm. Put it here. Skull. Skull has a very interesting story with me in that. Well, let me figure out why I didn't put it super quickly. Put it here. Um, yeah. Skull is a game where I feel like I have never actually won a game of Skull, and yet I still very much enjoy playing it. Which, I'm a fairly competitive person, so if I'm good at a game, it kind of like bumps it up for me a little bit. Like, that's just kind of like... I feel like that's the case for most people, too. But I'm not very good at Skull. I will say that. Despite that, uh, I still think it's a very fun game. Super simple. It's like a risk. It's a bluffing risk calculation game where you have to try to figure out like exactly like how many people have put down good cards and bad cards, and you try to like read people to figure out like which way they've gone. Really quick game. You can get this at Target. Um, I think. Uh, super simple to teach really quick to play goes up to six people really good game to have on hand like to play before you get into like something heavier slap 45 terrible game i'm afraid well maybe not terrible quite mediocre um so this is like made by the guys who made cards against humanity and it was their attempt to kind of create a variant of like egyptian rat screw which is a reaction based game where you're trying to like slap like the center deck as quickly as you can but you want to make sure you slap like the right card um it doesn't work super well i will say um the game mechanics are kind of clunky like with regards to one another there's different factions and some of them just seem blatantly better there's real gimmicky stuff you can do that doesn't feel super satisfying and it's just a pure reaction game like i've played this i played this a few times when i first got it and not since just because i very quick i got through that shiny new veneer of like oh a new game i love egyptian rat slap i'm quite good at it um this game is just a mess though compared to it rat slap is like a lot simpler and yeah Damn, I want to play Rat Slap again. Um, Small World. That is an okay game, I think. Probably wouldn't put it in fairly fun. Um, hmm. Throw it here. Small World is a territory control game that has a cool mechanic of you pick like a race and each race has different advantages you use your race to like the fullest of its ability and then you swap to like a different race just to try to control as much of the map as possible as consistently as possible uh, it's a good game um i'm not too excited to play it it is a good strategy game there's a lot of variability no two games are going to be exactly the same there are like, this is a game I can easily see having, like, a tier list of, like, the different races and, like, the different other abilities you can have. Um, yeah, it's a it's a very solid game. Not, like, my favorite territory control game, but a respectable 
entry. Smartass. Uh, I'm probably going to have to bleep that as well. Um, where do I want to put you? Well, actually, it's probably fine to say smartass because in this case, it's talking about our donkey. But eh, no, YouTube demonetization doesn't really care about that. It is fairly fun. Where am I putting you? Okay, it might just be okay. I'll throw it up here. Um, it's a game where one person will read off, will just start describing something. It'll either be a person, place, or a thing. The descriptions at the top will be the most broad. As you read through it, um, it'll become more and more specific, and then someone has to, and then the other players can try to guess. They can guess at any time, and it's kind of a risk. Like, if you don't have enough information, you might not get it right, but like if you wait too long, someone might get it before you. Um, the board is terrible. Like, the board makes no sense. There's this one spot on it that's, like, go back three spaces, but you've only got, like, a four-sided die or something like that. So it's, like, miserable. Um, yeah, the board is rough, and the um, cards aren't super unique, but it's, like, a fun enough trivia game. Smash Up. Uh, how many do I have left? I think I'm probably going to just go through all of them. At this point, like I'm already in deep. This is what like a four-hour recording at this point. Um, but yeah, smash up. This is okay. Um, yeah, I think it's just okay. Where do I put you? Here. Smash up is a game where you are smashing up two decks together you can play as like the pony faction but also like the robot faction and you can create kind of interesting synergies between these two those two and the game gives you a lot of different decks and there's a lot of different expansions and you use those to control like four territories on your board um good amount of replayability strategy doesn't feel super in depth to me you are very much at the mercy of what cards you draw there are probably optimal factions. This is a game that's probably been metagame to hell. If you're playing with people with at a similar skill level to you, it's probably fun. The cards are fun. They do fun things. Different factions have different interesting mechanics and play styles, which make it enjoyable. And the games don't last super long. So, yeah. Uh, the territory control aspect of it isn't probably like super interesting. It's probably like my main complaint with the game. But yeah. Snake Oil. This is another pitching game, and I totally forgot about it when I was talking about Bucket of Doom and Super Fight. It's basically the same as them, except this time you're trying to pitch an invention that will solve a particular problem. So, basically just a different variant of those two. It doesn't quite hit the same way Fun Employed does. Sorry. Um, sorry is terrible. Um... Sorry is a really bad game. Like, yeah, I don't. I'm sorry, I'm not even talking about it because like it's just it's just that bad. Um, game almost plays itself. There's very few decisions you make in this game. Space Alert. Space Alert is a game that is okay. It is a game. It's not the game's fault. It is just me not personally being as interested in this kind of game. It's a game that's all about panicking and that is fun because you are have a very limited amount of time to respond to like a board state you have to communicate with each other to like do things like quickly um and you're dealing with like aliens that are like attacking you or something um it's an okay game didn't love it didn't hate it splendor splendor i think is fairly fun um where do i want to put this um put it here 
Splendor. You're playing. It's an engine builder. You're playing as gem merchants, trying to, you know, get the most victory points as you can by like, um, getting coins and like buying cards. It's a pretty fun game. Um, super quick to teach, fairly quick to play. Um, decent amount of replayability. Not super interesting. Haven't played any of the expansions for it, so I can't comment on those. Spyfall. Spyfall is okay. Somewhere in here, probably. Okay. Um, Spyfall is a really interesting game. It's social deduction game where everyone knows the location except for one person it's kind of like chameleon in that way except chameleon it's not as brutal for the spy um at least that was like my personal experience with it like in in spyfall even if you go first you can kind of salvage it like a little bit there are cases where you just instantly lose the game um so yeah i just think it's honestly just chameleon but like better implemented stone age this is a worker placement game that is not as good as midgard and it's honestly in my mind pretty similar to Waterdeep. so i'm probably gonna just slot it in there um yeah i mean it has better it has like more interesting theming i guess than water deep uh, I played this game once, and it was a while ago, so I don't really remember the mechanics too well. Worker placement games aren't really my favorite. This one, I remember it running on a little bit longer than I would have liked. Honestly, like, it's a good game. It's just not really my cup of tea. Sunken Sailor. Sunken Sailor is a drawing game with a hidden trader that's a lot like um, Spyfall and uh, Chameleon. It's... to put it in my game i think i'll put it here um it's really i don't know i just don't really love these games where like one person just doesn't know what's going on and they have to pretend like they do this in this one everyone is drawing a drawing that's related to like a word and you basically have to prove that you know what the word is. Um, but if you're, you know, the sunken sailor, you don't know what it is, and you're just trying to, like, bluff or, like, try to figure it out as you go along. I don't love these kinds of, like, social deduction games, I guess. Um, I think from I think the reason why I don't like it is the power imbalance. So in like most social deduction games, the person who is on their own, like the mafia for example, usually has more at their disposal to compensate for them being isolated or like the smaller faction. In these games, you don't have that. You don't know anything and you're kind of floundering and hoping that you get lucky or that you can like bluff your way. So it kind of feels like punching down almost if you're playing as like a good guy in this game, which I think is kind of like why I'm not the biggest fan of like Chameleon and like this game. Sushi Go Party. I like Sushi Go. Sushi Go is a drafting game. Um, there's different like um, there are different strategies you can use to try to improve points. Um, you really have to think about what other people are going for and how likely it is for your strategy to succeed. It's a very fun game. Um, yeah, I would probably put it up here, honestly. Or maybe, no, I'll, I'll put it here. This is hard. <laughs> this is, I got in so many games that's honestly getting really difficult to slot it in like exactly like in a spot. Put it here. Okay, I'm not gonna mess with it. Um, Tenzi. Tenzi is a terrible game. Actually, that's that's a lie. It's um, it's a mediocre game. Tenzi is a game where you have like ten dice or something, and you have to get them all to be the same number. 
that's it. And it's the fastest person to do it wins. Um, it's like an okay, like, dexterity game, I suppose. Super quick, so, like, you can try it, and if you hate it, you've only wasted, like, a minute of your life, as opposed to, like, two hours. Um, but yeah, it's a really quick dexterity game. <sighs> Still have so many to go through. Um, alright. I'm gonna start going faster. Terraforming Mars, engine building game. Um, I don't love this one, honestly. And I know a lot of people do, and it's probably going to make them upset where I place this. But, uh, I think it's just okay. Um, actually, no, that's, that's a lie. It's, like, fairly fun. I'm putting it at the bottom of fairly fun. Um, it's really, it's got great theming. Good different strategies, and it's a game that you can replay a lot, because there's a lot of different factions, a lot of different, like, build styles. Really satisfying engine game, engine builder. It just does, I... I'm not sure why it doesn't appeal to me as much as it probably should. Probably the game length, I think. But, uh, and lack of direct conflict, I would say. But yeah, that's my thought on Terraforming Mars. Um, The Mind. The Mind is a cool game. The Mind is a game where you're supposed to do, you're supposed to play it without talking to each other. And it's more of an experience than a game. It's cooperative. You're trying to get to 100 by playing cards in your hand um, and you have to play them in the right order and you do that by reading other people and seeing how eager they seem to be to play the cards that they have it's a really cool experience honestly um and winning this game is one of the most satisfying things like in the world how willing would i be to play this game though right next to terraforming mars the nasty seven this is a game that is mediocre i'm afraid um i played this game once like one night and i already feel like i got everything out of it that i possibly could because this is a game where um you basically have to just like not make mistakes you have to be like paying attention to like the rules and like following them and as long as you do that you don't lose and if you're playing with sober people who are relatively like intelligent then this game basically just becomes like a slog so for that i'm gonna put it here yeah the resistance um i included this just because to highlight kind of the difference between this and avalon um the resistance is pretty similar i I know there are more expansions to the Resistance that apparently make it better than Avalon, but I haven't played those, unfortunately. So honestly, I might just leave Resistance out, because Avalon is just slightly better. They're too similar, I think, without me having the experience of playing like this expansions. So I'm not going to comment on that one, I suppose. Therapy. <laughs> therapy? Okay, Therapy is so bad, it actually kind of moves up a spot because of it. Um, therapy will be... Um, therapy goes here now therapy is a kind of it has a cool concept the idea of it is that we're like therapists we're moving around the board answering psychology themed questions and i'm a psych major so that's kind of like interesting in of itself i like people's psychology and it's fun to have psychology themed trivia the issue with this game is that it was made in like the 70s or 80s um and it shows <laughs> it really does show um there are questions that are just blatantly untrue now they like the studies they are referencing have since been debunked some of them racist most of them sexist um and just not true which kind of makes this game enjoyable to play just because it's kind of like taking a time machine and you're just if you're playing this competitively, you're gonna be miserable because you can like you can be like a psych major like me and like know most of the current psychology, and they'll just give you answers that are just straight up wrong, and you're like, oh, that's just wrong. Like it's like having a trivia question. It's like having playing a trivia game where half the answers are just wrong, but it's kind of funny to see like how they are wrong, I suppose. Um, there's some really bad mechanics in this game. Like it wasn't really fully thought out. Um. There's, like, this therapy session mechanic, which could be interesting, but honestly, like, it's brutal. 
um because you get stuck in therapy forever based off of just like rng like there will be questions that's like one person will be the therapist and one person will be the therapy i suppose is the word um and it'll be like on a scale from one to ten rate how confident you are and unless you and the therapist put the exact same number without communicating you're staying in therapy so uh that sucks um and some of them are like way easier so it's really just like luck of the draw therapy is a game that could definitely be a fun game if it was cleaned up a lot like if it was like really cleaned up it could be a solid like it could be up here for like family games but in its current uh abhorrent state it's gonna stay down here okay ticket to ride ticket to ride is a fairly fun game i am going to put it here um honestly seven wonders is probably too high right now yeah okay ticket to ride fun game you're making railroads and stuff it's cool you can screw each other people <laughs> you can screw your friends over in this game pretty easily and it's fun to do that um it is honestly it's a really simple game it's kind of like I've said this about Catan, but it, it also feels like the Monopoly of like Euro games to me, except it's way better than Monopoly is. Um, really easy to learn, really accessible, really fun. Like not too long. It probably takes like an hour to like play a game of this. Um, yeah. Uh, expect for uh, feelings to be hurt though when you cut off someone's uh, train track. Tigris and Euphrates. This is a game that will make people pissed off because I think it's just okay. Er, yeah, it's just okay. Yeah. Um, this is a game that is, I know a lot of people on like Board Game Geek think really highly of this game as it's like the best, uh, I'm trying to think of the word for it. Um, like we were just putting pieces down on like the board um it's escaping me now but i've been like talking about board games for like three hours now so please forgive me for not remembering but um i played it once it was a good game i will say i didn't have like a super fun time i didn't come like out of that game thinking like oh i can't wait to like buy this or play it like again but it was like a very it had a good level of strategy um very good theming very consistent Lots of good elements like kind of coming together in that game. Tortuga, social deduction game. Um, so it's gonna go up here. No, uh, it doesn't go that high. It's gonna go into fairly fun. Um, this game is kind of similar to Secrets in that there's like two factions and you're not really sure like which faction you're on. And then there's like the Dutch. Honestly, it's a, it's very similar to Secrets now that I think about it. Um, and you're trying to figure out like who's on your team and you want to take control of the ships and get like as much treasure as you can um yeah i think it's i'll put it with secrets because i feel like the two are pretty equivalent um i do like tortuga more though um yeah it's a fun game of backstabbing and betrayal and a lot of shenanigans can happen in this game um okay trivial pursuit I'm honestly kind of surprised it doesn't have Trivial Pursuit in here. It's it's just standard trivia, man. Like, I'm putting it at the bottom of okay. It's literally just standard trivia. If you like trivia, Trivial Pursuit is like your thing. It's okay. Two Rooms and a Boom. This is a great game. Um, it takes some tinkering to figure it like how it works exactly but this is probably the best game with like a large amount of people like on this list i would put it here i think yeah so this is a super cool game um two teams red team and blue team red team as the bomber blue team as the president you play this game in two separate rooms if at the end of the game, the bomber and the president are in the same room, the bomber, the red team wins. If they're in different rooms, the blue team wins. Really cool. It's a really cool kind of like 
social position like jockeying kind of game where you're trying to like you talk to each other you collect information it's a very social like party game for sure and you're trying to, and there's a lot of like meaningful decisions that everyone can make simultaneously really cool game love it a lot want to play it more but you need at least like 10 people <laughs> to get like a good game ubongo this game is lacking or mediocre. Yeah. So it's a puzzle game where you're basically given like this shape and you have certain pieces that you need to fill it. So you kind of like Tetris style, like kind of move them around to like rearrange them to find the perfect fit. It's like a, it's something that like an IQ test would use to figure out how smart you are. Um, you like figuring out shapes you know it's great i think it's fine um this game has a few issues the main issue being that the point system is nonsense they really should fix that um but yeah it's a quick game really simple to learn if you're playing with someone that's way better than you expect to have a miserable time and if you're way better than everyone else also expect to have a miserable time so or you could just feel good about how good you are at like puzzles uno uno is a game where if <laughs> the first time I made this tier list, it would have been down here. Now, Uno is okay. It goes... Here. Uno is an interesting game. It sucks if you just play it by the base rules. And I know I was, like, lampooning people about Monopoly earlier for, like, using their own house rules. But Uno, there are some rules that the game really benefits from. My favorite being the jump in rule, which is if someone plays like the blue three and you have the blue three, you can play it immediately and then you get to take your turn. Um, that rule for me makes the, the Uno game a lot better because before that rule, there's no reason to pay attention when it's not your turn. You're basically just waiting for your turn to come around over and over again, just keeping track of the cards other people have. Uno has some issues in that it has a munchkin effect. Um, which isn't that bad in this game just because there's not that many like fu cards like available to you um yeah i mean it's uno like <laughs> i don't know why i'm here explaining uno all that much but yeah i think it's okay i used to think it was down here now i'm more happy with being here so um evie if you're watching this you can be proud that i moved it up um unstable unicards this game is Yu-Gi-Oh, but with unicorns um and for that reason it is not even a game no i'm kidding uh i don't really think super highly of Yu Gi Oh, honestly um i think of the tcgs it's probably the worst um i'm gonna put unstable unicorns i'm gonna put it here um it's a it's a fun game it has the munchkin issue where there's fu cards um yeah it's a really cute game though i think it's really fun for like casual gamers um if you're playing with a bunch of tryhard people i do not recommend it at all um if you know someone who's a brony it's probably a good um birthday gift the art is cute the art is actually really cute like some unicorns oh my god this is adorable okay wow we're at the w's and then so for clarification, my initial list was the ones that went up in alphabetical order. And then since then, I've kind of just like added stuff in, um, like as I played them. So the newer stuff that I've, the more, the stuff I more recently played or felt like I needed to add is like coming at the end here. Welcome to the dungeon. Don't really have a whole lot to say about this one. It's a very quick, um, push your luck kind of game, I think. Um, it's honestly just okay put it above blood throne um super quick game i think it's like one person versus a dungeon i honestly forget the details of it but it's kind of whatever welcome to welcome to is a cool game welcome to pretty much kick-started the roll and write genre up again a while back um i'm going to slot you in right here it's a cool game where you have like a sheet of paper you 
um, are basically like building a neighborhood. You have to be really strategic with how you build it in order to go for certain like victory conditions. So like get different like kinds of points. There's different strategies. Good amount of like a good blend of RNG and strategy in the game. And yeah, honestly, it's just a fun game. I would like to play that again. One Night Ultimate Werewolf. Ba -ba -ba -ba. It's up here somewhere. Um, I'll put it here. No. Put it here. One Night Ultimate Werewolf. Fun, quick, social production game. That's why it's so high. Um, yeah. Uh, really, it's one of those games where there's actually no skill ceiling on strategy. It's like... I could do this, but he'll expect me to do that. So I could do this in response to that, and I could do this in response to that. And, like, you get just a meta power of levels, essentially. It goes up to, like, ad infinity. Um, it gets to a point where making objectively terrible plays is actually objectively the right play, which is kind of fun. Um, a lot of chaos happens. You're never entirely sure where you stand in the round. There's a lot of variance in this game. Some rounds are just insane and really fun other rounds it's just like oh we figure out who the werewolf is in like two seconds and it's just over um so yeah a lot of high variance really quick game a little complicated in its execution um you need an app in order to like run it you don't well i mean you don't have to have the app but memorizing it it's a lot worse newer players can struggle a little bit with this game just in like the complexity of the roles and stuff you might have to explain it to them a few times but it is still a fun entry-level game, I would say. Wit's End. This is a trivia game that is like trying to be Trivial Pursuit, but smarter, and fails. Um, <laughs> Wit's End is like hard. It's a trivia game where there's like a few different categories on the cards. There's like kinds where you're like ordering them, like which is the like most recent country, and it'll like what are the countries in terms of like age, and it'll give you like three countries and stuff like that a few different categories the only one that i can even like get like i can even get like uh the answer right is the riddle category which yes there is a riddle category um yeah i mean it's just a trivia game I'm putting it here at trivial pursuit you've got crabs honestly i do not remember this game at all so i'm not going to talk about it zombie dice is a push your luck dice rolling game that is mediocre um yeah i mean it's a cheap game super quick you're just rolling dice and trying to avoid rolling brains because that means the zombies are eating your brains yeah yahtzee push your luck oh i don't have yahtzee on here yahtzee for the record would be um probably somewhere down here yahtzee is not a very fun game um carcassonne carcassonne it's very fun quite like carcassonne um put it here carcassonne is a good game um you're building a kingdom with the help of other people you can screw other people over they can screw you over lots of different there's i don't think this game actually has different strategies there's really just kind of like really only one way to play it and it's very dependent on just like the tiles that you get it's a fun game though light it's a light strategy game. Charty Party. Charty Party is Cards Against Humanity, but with charts. My girlfriend really likes this game. If I put it down here, she will be upsetty. Spaghetti. Um, it doesn't honest. It's honestly better than Cards Against Humanity, though. And apples to apples. Would I say it's a? It's probably still just like a mediocre game, though. Um. I mean, I would sooner play it over pretty much all of these. Yeah, wait, hold on. It's going up. I'm moving it until I get a game, get to a game I would rather um, play over it. Okay, I'll leave it here. It actually made it up a good amount of distance from Cards Against Humanity. Um, why do I like Charity Party better? I don't know. The graph style of it just seems to work better, I think. Um, hmm. 
not entirely sure why this one is. I find this one to be a lot more fun than uh, Cards Against Humanity. Strange. It really is. Hmm. Well, I'm not going to dwell on that too much. All right, we're almost, we're almost there. Dogs of War. Dogs of War is a really cool game. I said that a lot. I'm probably a broken record at this point. Um, I like it. I don't think you can get this game in print anymore. At least that's what my friend told me when he went to play it with him. Um, I like this one a lot, actually. I'm going to drop it at the bottom of Very Fun. This is a really interesting game where um, it's kind of like Camel Up, which I probably shouldn't be referencing that. That was about an hour ago. You don't remember what that game was. Um, there's different noble houses and you can have a certain investment in each one and you can kind of place soldiers in order to fight for them against other noble houses. So you're trying to improve your noble house while hurting the noble houses of people that the other players are supporting. But there's like kind of this like common interest thing. Other players might have more common interest with you. So they'll want to help you, but also want to, you know, hurt you in other ways. Really cool, fluid game that has a nice ebb and flow of power associated with it. It's not super clear who is winning all the time, but you can kind of have a general idea of who your biggest competitors are. And it's a game that does um, the swinginess very well. Like, um, you can be in, like, at the bottom and still have a chance at winning it all, I think, at the end, if you play your cards right. Or at the very least, you can play it very well. The Estate. Bid and Build. Um, this is what Monopoly wishes it was. Um, this was also a very fun game that I would like to play again. Um, how do I just... I'm trying to remember exactly how the Estate plays. It is like a bidding game. Um, it's bid and build. It's in the name. Um, I probably can't do this game justice in terms of my explanation. There is a lot of really fun auction strategy that goes on in this game. Also some good like placement strategies for like your buildings. There is the munchkin effect, but it is well mitigated in this one. Um, you are not, anyone can win up until the last moment and it doesn't hurt, uh, which is a good thing. Keeps the game close, but not infuriatingly so. Fog of Love. Fog of Love is a game that I did not have the best experience with, unfortunately. Um, this is a game that is probably best played with someone you're familiar with who is also interested in kind of like role-playing, I get. Like someone who would be okay with like opening up and kind of like acting it out. Uh, it's a game where you pretend to be in a relationship with the other people. You have like your own kind of goals in terms of like you have different personalities and you have to like do act certain ways in certain situations in order to make yourself happy but you can only win the game if you are happy your partner is happy and your relationship is a success so you kind of have to balance like your own interests with the interests of the other person and you can kind of like role play as you do it um my experience with this game was kind of awkward unfortunately um so it wasn't like the most enjoyable thing i think if you play this with the right people it could definitely go up I'm going to put this here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a really cool game. You can tell my brain is fried because I just keep saying the same things over and over again. But I guess there's really no other ways to say it. This is, this is a game that has a really interesting mechanic of everyone is paired off into either ladies or gentlemen. And they have different kind of game you play as a team and the ladies and gentlemen have to work together in order to beat the other you know couples at the table and you don't have to you know if you're a guy you don't have to be a gentleman you could be a lady too the gentleman game is a fast-paced kind of flipping tiles and trying to quickly assemble the ones that you want to get the most money so that you're accruing like you know money for your partner the lady to spend on different clothes and dresses and stuff like that in this really interesting kind of point scoring system that has it feels like almost like well you have to keep like your outfit 
restricted to only like one or two brands so you kind of have to think about like how to get the most points while not having too many clashing brands um you have to think about clothes that other people are buying because they might buy the stuff that you want that's good for you before you can get it um quite like this game where would i put this I know I've just put three at like the bottom here, but I unironically think this, well, no, I'll put ladies and gentlemen here. Yeah. Letter jam, letter jam, word game. Pretty cool. Um, it's a cooperative word game. Very much like this. Where do I want to put you? So it's a game where your card is facing out from you. It's a letter. Um, everyone is in that situation. You create words using other people's letters. They can see out all the letters in the word except for what their own letter is, and you're trying to figure out um, like what all of your letters are, essentially. It's a cooperative game, which is nice because you know sometimes you don't want to be competitive with each other. Very quick game. Um, oh, it's not that quick. Really easy to teach probably goes about like an hour or so um there's no me mechanics in this that really bug me has a really nice design um really pretty like components and stuff yeah honestly solid game one deck dungeon hmm. this game is okay Yeah, um, you're going into a dungeon. I have this game on my phone. It's like a fun one-player board game, as sad as that is to say. Um, you can play it with two people. It's um, probably a little, it lacks a little bit in like the replayability department, I would say. Um, but it's a, it's a fun enough game, I guess. Really quick, just dungeon crawling style game. Um, Battle of Legends is kind of whatever you get a deck you play you and a partner are up against another team of two and you can pick a hero and the heroes are all like one of the heroes is like bruce lee and then there's other ones it's like king arthur and stuff like that you all have your own different decks that have different play styles kind of move around the board the board movement is kind of weird and that's the main reason why i don't like this game that much um i would sooner play it over those with these Wavelength. Wavelength is a game that is cool. <laughs> How do you like that? <laughs> really dodge the plagiarism checkers on that one. Um, so in this one, you are trying to describe something. So you're given like a point on like this semicircle. If it's right in the middle, um, it's kind of even. And then there's like the two extremes. You're given a card that is... That has a spectrum so it could be from like cold to hot and one of the there will be a mark on your little semicircle at some point on the semicircle so if it's like in the middle you want to pick something that's kind of like neither cold nor hot if it's more on the right you want to pick something that's like slightly more hot and so on and so on so it's kind of fun thinking it's a really fun game in terms of like the categories that they give you there are some really strange categories it's like um most underrated versus most overrated letters which is something that no one has ever thought about until you draw the card so it's kind of fun hearing the discussions of a is totally an overrated letter because it's like an a plus or something but the game kind of like has interesting discussion it's a fun guessing game i quite like it it's fairly fun it is going somewhere in here somewhere let's brain is fried and I'm having a hard time choosing where to put this. Let's put it here. 
fairly fun. Ascension, deck building game, not unlike um, Star Realms. Unfortunately, it is not quite as good as Star Realms, I will say. Um, mostly because like I don't like the victory point mechanic in like Ascension. That's like the main thing that's hanging it up. And I only have the base game. It's probably better with the expansions, but like if your game isn't good by itself and then you use a bunch of expansions to get going, that's another point against it. I would put it... It's still fairly fun. Oh, maybe it's not fairly fun. Oh, no. Oh, no. Is it just okay? All right. It's at, like, the top of okay. That's not too bad. Dominion. Um, honestly, I'm probably going to just throw Dominion in with Ascension. The two seem kind of similar to me, and they have, like, kind of that victory point deck building mechanic. Um. Dominion is probably better, um, but not substantially better. I might honestly just even do like this, which I feel bad that like, you know, this game is like solo effort and it's eaten out so many other games, but that's just how it is. Like just one is very low effort, like bland kind of game, but it's just so much fun. So. That's just how it be sometimes. Sorry for all you deep, thematic, and complex games, but sometimes just simple fun is better. Um, Dominion and Ascension. Yeah, they're both satisfying like deck building games. I don't like the, it's like indirect conflict, which is why it's not as high as like um, Star Realms is for me. But yeah, they're both serviceable games. Brain games, the game is terrible. This is a grandma game, and by that, they go to the store, and they're like, oh, PJ likes board games. And they go to the store, and they pick out this one, and you're just like, grandma, why? You could have gotten me anything else, and I would have been happy. Very low effort game. Don't recommend it. Five crowns. Mediocre. Um, it's, uh, it's like Bridge, I think. Yeah, I think it's just pretty much Bridge. Um, I haven't played this in a while, so I might be wrong. Like, I, might, I mean, I haven't played Bridge in a while, but you're trying to like create sets of cards in like your hand and then get rid of all of them. Maybe that's Remy. I don't know. Uh, long story short, I really don't like this game. I've only played it with like two people. It might be better with more people. It might be even worse. Um, I would put it honestly here. Fox in the Forest. Really cool. One on one trick taking game. This one is going to go. Mm. Throw it here. Um, it's a two player game. And it's really nice because it has this mechanic in it where you want to win just more than your opponent but you don't want to win too much which kind of compensates for if one person just has a really terrible hand then you need to be careful because if you win every round you actually get like no points the optimal thing to do is win seven tricks and your like opponent wins like six or actually i think it's actually like 10 and like three or something like that but point is you want to win just enough but you don't want to win too hard or you get punished which makes the game have like an interesting mind game where you wonder if the other person is still trying to win the round or if they're trying to intentionally lose and dump their hand. Really cool um, balancing act when you're on like either side of it. This is another game that is terrible. It's um, this is a game where pretty much um, like if the card is yellow it'll say the word red and sometimes you'll have to say the color of the card other times you have to say the word there's like swear words in it for literally no reason it's just a terrible game don't play this don't even know why i'm bothering reviewing it because it's just so unimaginative and dumb hail hydra has the same social deduct has the same social mechanic deduction mechanic as like battlestar galactica in that 
you play cards that are like either helping or hurting they get shuffled up you don't know who played what this one is themed after marvel um you're playing to take down like marvel bad guys some of you are secretly agents of hydra who are helping them um so yeah it's a pretty cool game uh i've said that too much let me god if i try to cut out all the times i've said that this video is going to be so choppy where do i want to put the put it over here okay yeah bottom of that harry potter another deck building game battle for hogwarts so most games based off of books or movies terrible um not this one this one was actually very fun um it's structured in terms of like the first half of the books you can go through book one and have access to spells and people from that one all the way up until like book seven you fight like the villains of harry potter which is pretty cool um me and my girlfriend played through this and had a pretty good time i think it was really fun like while well lasted and then we gifted it to you know my sister so that she could like go through this quite enjoyed this game while we had it i'm gonna drop it right there I Descent, this is another target, target style game um, that I was not a fan, that I was not a fan of. Um, this game had a really poorly thought out victory mechanic where like playing intentionally bad ultimately ended up being good for you or like being dishonest. Um, I don't want to get into it too much just because I think it's a very whatever game i think it should be disregarded long live the king this is a game that was actually um this is a game that went on kickstarter the person who made it like was looking for people to play test it and they invited me to do so so i gave it a shot i played this game three times i think and lost every time um, pretty brutally and that has kind of led me to have probably a slightly negative opinion of the game um, just because like okay that sounds unfair to say but um, pretty much it's like a fine game um, it's a last it's a first person who likes to fill their victory condition wins you're trying to figure out like who is like what role what their victory condition is trying to advance your own interests while maybe helping other people with theirs but you want to win before they do um you have the cool option to win in an alliance which is worth less points than winning on your own so yeah it's a good game um it's definitely okay i would put it Um, it's a cool social deduction game, I would say. Like, it can feel frustrating at times because there can be at times where you're just out of the line and kind of have to, like, sit around and just, like, you're not really invested in it at that point. And that would probably be, like, my biggest gripe with it. But, uh, and it does have some, like, kind of munchkin-y elements, but, yeah. Those are my main gripes with the game. Lost Legacy, this is basically just love letter again but i would say slightly better the theming is like a little more fun actually i don't know i don't know if it's slightly better but it's pretty much it's the same game as love letter um different theming different cards that do different things they're pretty equivalent i would say love letter is definitely like the simpler game um lost legacy can be fun yeah monikers this is a very fun game this is a very fun game i'm gonna say where would i put monikers let's put it here monikers is like fishbowl um everyone picks five cards to add to a central pool and the game is played in three rounds in the first round you go through as many cards as you can in a minute and you scribe them however you want the cards have a little text that kind of explains them 
and the cards are actually pretty good. Um, it's not terrible. Like, you know how some games will try to be like hip with the kids and it really doesn't work? It works well with monikers. One of the cards is, oh, lol, he coming. And it's pretty good. They give, like, accurate descriptions of it. First round, you say whatever you want about it except for the name of it itself. Second round, you can only say one word. But this uses the same pool of cards, so you kind of, like, have gone through and you know all the options at this point. Third round is charades. Um, and the charades is where it gets really fun. Um, really fun party game. Uh, super quick. Super easy to learn. Great for large groups of people, too. Set. Why? Dude, I hate set. <laughs> I really hate set. I really, I really hate set. <laughs> I can't put it this slow, though. Uh, man. I'm gonna put it here. Set, for those who are unaware, is a game... It has... It's a very specific skill set playing this game. Where, if you're good at this game, you feel like a god, and if you don't know what's going on this is the most miserable game on the planet i more often fall into that latter camp how it works is it's like pattern recognition there's like a tableau of cards on the field and you have to create a set of three of them that are either all of the same attribute or diff all different of the same attribute which is really confusing there's like colors like red green and blue there's like shapes there's um amount so it could have like one shape on it two or three and you have to make sure that they're all different or all the same and you have to pull them off the blue and so you have a set and then more cards get added and it's brutal like you this is one of those games that requires very like specific like you have to only play this game to get better at it like it's not generalizable at all and I, for that reason, I don't feel good winning or losing this game, which is why it's so mediocre. But it's definitely more of a me thing. There are people who can definitely enjoy this game because it's a best-selling game. It's been around for a while, so some people have to like it. Um, Shadow Hunters, that's what this says. Shadow Hunters is okay. It's a game kind of like Tortuga. And all of those other ones where there's some people on your team, some people who aren't. You can go around the board and get different kinds of equipment to make yourself more powerful. And you try to you fight other people to try to like um, knock them out of the game. Main issue I have with this is that it doesn't seem super well balanced, in my opinion. It has kind of this like anime theme, which I'm not a super huge fan of, even though I do like anime. Um yeah um this is a game that i just feel like would have benefited from more play testing honestly put it here voting game who cares this is another one of those oh actually you know what no it's not that bad um this is a game where you're basically playing with your friends and it's just like who is the most likely to get drunk in the dungeon parking lot and everyone votes for who they think is most likely and if you're with the majority it's good for you or no it's whoever gets voted gets like the point actually so that's less interesting but um it's a bit lacking it's a fun drunk party game nothing too deep going on here um yeah i'll just probably just put it there uh no replayability at all honestly like once you go through the initial deck of cards with like the same group of people there's no point playing it again total recall played this game once or twice um don't really have a whole lot to say about it feel like it was lacking um it's one of those games where you're trying to figure out like who's on your team but uh the theming is like good like that's the best episode of rick and morty but the gameplay I just didn't find to be particularly interesting or like satisfying. Um, I'm gonna keep that because I like it. Five minute dungeon. I have played this game exactly once. 
and I hated it. Um, but I don't feel like I've given this game a fair enough shot, so I'm going to refrain from lampooning it. Um, we played it like online through like Tabletop Simulator, and that is definitely the wrong medium for this game because it's a lot of you're talking over each other, you're moving really fast, um, and that's just not good for like kind of talking over like Discord, for example. Like talking over people just does not work. Eclipse. Eclipse, so this is a game that most people have probably not played. Um, there is a different board game, but this is a card game that was actually invented by some like friends of mine, and it's Mafia, but specifically for eight players, has a really interesting kind of like voting system, like how it works, where, um, so there's eight people, one person will be randomly assigned to be the first accuser, they choose someone that they want to vote for. If they get a majority, then that person is on the chopping block. Um, wait, are they on the chopping block? No. Okay, so the the night ends once or the day ends once someone gets a majority of votes. Um, but if they don't get a majority, then the person on the chopping block is the person who accused them. And if no one accuses someone else that was not of the original two, then the accuser dies. And then it just like continues like that until either a vote successfully goes through or you run out of people who can do accusations, in which case the last accuser is the one who dies. There's a power roll, there's the wraiths and who are like the mafia. And then there's the light weaver who is kind of the, who's kind of like the, nurse and like the vigilante rolled into one role so if the light bringer dies or the light giver or something like that light weaver um if the light weaver dies then they can explode and take one of the mafia with them or one other player with them they basically shoot and they just hope they get lucky they have the possibility of saving someone like as the doctor at night um and if like a wraith dies before like the light weaver like does their thing then um the wraith gets to explode and takes out like another person so it's really just good for balancing the number of players at all times it guarantees that you'll have um day one will be eight people i believe um, and then day two will always be seven i can't seven it will always be seven or five or something like it's really, it's an interesting game. Where would I put it? I would put it at the bottom of Very Fun, honestly. King Domino is a game I mentally compare to Carcassonne a lot. Um, just because they feel very similar to me. Except in this one, each person is kind of building their own kingdom. It's a very satisfying game. Um, it's not amazing. It's um, it's just okay. It's better with expansions. You're kind of building your own kingdom with domino pieces that have different terrain on them, and you're trying to make just kind of like the prettiest kingdom you can, getting as much of your terrain like clustered as possible. Um, throw it here. Medium. Medium is a game where you are trying to get in sync with like other people and say, so each of you will play a card. One could be like cabin and one could be like snow. And you're trying to both say the word that's like the medium between those two. Um, it's a little lacking in terms of just like the scoring system. And it's a game that I feel like kind of gets old rather quickly for that reason. Put it here. Super dark. Um, this is a cool game by the same guys that made Eclipse, where hopefully it becomes like available for you to like purchase or something at some point in the future. How it works is everyone is a donor, like funding like um, a government like a super PAC, like you are a. 
why can't I think of the word? For like, it's like you're bribing people, but they don't call it bribing. It's like, um, you can really tell just how tired I am at this point. Cause I can't even think of this simple word. Anyways, um, you are funding people's like political campaigns in order to like advance your own interests. Most people are good. Some people are bad. They're called dark money. If enough dark money is put towards a candidate and they get funded, then it, then it becomes evil. If three of the candidates end up good, then the good team wins. If three end up evil, the evil team wins. It's like um, Avalon, but with like a political like theming to it, which is quite fun. Um, lobbyists, that's what I was trying to think of. It's like lobbyists. Um, I would put you put you here calico calico is a tile placing game um that is very it has a very nice aesthetic um it's a really good strategy game uh it can break relationships which is always a plus um You're like kind of creating like a quilt for like your cat to like sleep on. Um, you want to create quilts with like matching patterns or like colors and stuff like that. Uh, it's a really good strategy game, honestly. It's got really pretty artwork. Yeah. Dresden Files. This is a um, game that is based off of a um, TV or a book series that I quite like. Um, the gameplay is not interesting. I feel like it only works if you have people who are all interested in it. And even then, it's still just kind of like whatever. Um, honestly, I'm going to put it in for here. Just because I really don't like these games at all. Fox in the Forest Duet. It's like Fox in the Forest, but cooperative this time. Not as good as um, Fox in the Forest. Um, you're working together, you have to kind of like, um, you're trying to make sure that certain people win like certain tricks by like a certain margin. And for that reason, hmm. where do I want to put you? I'll leave it there. Um, Gloomhaven, the number one rated game on Board Game Geek. Where do I want to put this bad boy? Not that high. So, oh boy, this is gonna be me talking a lot. Gloomhaven has some pretty cool things about it. I like legacy games. Um, the issue with Gloomhaven is that it doesn't really feel like I'm changing the world in a meaningful way. It feels like I'm really just unlocking different like quest lines and stuff, and it doesn't really feel that personalized to me, I guess. It's not unique enough in terms of its um, legacy stuff in order to make it like super compelling in that department. I like the hand management system and like the movement and the combat. It drags a bit. Um, I've mostly played with just like in a two person group, which is not ideal. I've done four person groups, but um, th in that case, I feel like not engaged a good amount of time while other people are doing their turns. I've never felt particularly compelled to role play a character in this game. The role playing aspect of it doesn't seem that strong to me. It has cool world building, cool races, a lot, a huge amount of replayability. Um, and it's cool to kind of just like build your character up over time. Um, maybe not, you know, role playing wise, but like 
you know, just getting stronger and being able to handle more stuff. Um, it's in the fairly fun tier for me. I think I'll put it right here, right below Fox and Sports. Um, it's a game I would love to play more. Uh, yeah, I think that's kind of like in brief my thoughts on the game so far. I'm not super far in. I've probably played seven or eight times or something like that. So take with that as you will. Hive. Hive is a really um, neat, simple strategy game. I've only touched on this a bit, and I think it's okay. It's like at the bottom of okay for me. Um, it's a pure strategy game, honestly, which is kind of interesting. Um, it has like an inter It has good theming, I suppose, and it's a game that probably has a very high um, skill ceiling. I would think you could probably put in a lot of time into that game. Okay, Mystic Veil. Vale. I really like Mystic Veil. Vale. I'm going to put it here. Mystic Veil vale has a really cool mechanic in it, in that it's a card building, deck building game, where the cards are broken up into three sections, and you can buy upgrades to like slot in to either section of the card. So you can kind of make your own cards as the game goes on and create them with like different synergies and stuff. Um, really cool, the really cool um, artwork. The components are great. Um, the game is quick. It's satisfying. It ends. It feels like at just the right, right before turns start to get disgustingly long. You get those really satisfying like combos in this game while like your opponents kind of look on sadly as you play your entire deck in one turn which is the best um you have stuff to do off other people's turns and yeah honestly like mystic veil vale really has it all it's one of my favorite deck builders and that's saying a lot because deck building is probably one of my favorite genres of like board games villainous villainous was lacking i've only got the base game of villainous and i was not impressed at all it really felt like mostly like a game of solitaire with you occasionally just screwing over the other person you're playing with um not even that high honestly putting it here maybe in this spot please um no i put medium honestly too low so i'm gonna bump it up a little bit Yeah, not really much thoughts on Villainous. Uh, it's pretty boring. I mean, if you were like Disney, you'd probably enjoy it. But like from a mechanic standpoint, it feels like there's a bunch of different like um, villains that you can pick from. They all have the different styles, but they don't really feel like they were fleshed out enough, honestly. I don't think enough playtesting and fine-tuning was done for this game. Oh, man. Okay, this is our last row. We've got like 10 left that I'm going to go through. Arboretum, one of the prettiest games that I own. All the cards are like holographic. They're different kinds of trees. Super pretty game. Really simple strategy game as well. Uh, short, fun, goes up to four people. Surprisingly, like high level strategy can go on in this game. Um, and for those reasons, I'm putting it pretty high up. It's in the fairly fun tier, I think. Um, hmm. uh, I'm going to put it right here. It is definitely fairly fun. Really pretty game. Highly recommend it if you're a fan of, like, trees. Battleship, the original game. Um, I kind of put this in, like, last minute, like today, because... I feel like Battleship probably deserves a place on, like, this tier list somewhere. Not because it's good, just because, like, it is very much, like, a unique kind of game compared to all these. Um, I will definitely say, though, it's probably mediocre. I'll put it with Mastermind because I feel like these two are pretty similar in that it doesn't really feel necessarily that you're playing the other person. You are a little bit, um, 
there are definitely optimal strategies that you can do for searching and those strategies can be influenced a little bit just based off of like what you know of the personality of the person you're playing with um so yeah battleship it's honestly a fun game for kids not really a whole lot of strategy in it um captain sonar blows it out of the water so go play that century spice road i played this game for the first time yesterday and i quite liked it um it's a really fast engine building game where you're like collecting spices and you're getting like cards that are like farmers or like spice merchants and you're trying to trade up and you're trying to buy these spice contracts to get points really fast game really satisfying engine building game quite liked it it is going somewhere right now i'm gonna put it right here fairly fun game detective club this is a game that i played that is similar to it's chameleon meets dixit um and by that i had a long discussion about this game last night in terms of like how i feel about it some issues i have with this game is that um how it works is there are we play with six people one person is the informant they pick a word and then they play two dixit style cards that are like very fairy tale-esque to like accompany that word so like they'll play those everyone every other player except for one will know what the word is and they will play cards corresponding to it the last player doesn't know what the word is and no one knows who that the conspirator the person who doesn't know is so they have to like play the cards that they think are the best fit based off of the cards that other people are playing and then try to bluff it afterwards um it's definitely better than dixit well okay i don't know about dixit it's definitely better than chameleon is it better than dixit probably um it's an okay game i would be willing to play it again my issue with it is that there is no there is some kind of wonky scoring things where like you're not really disincentivized to just not play the game properly which kind of hurts this game a little bit like you could be a detective which is like a normal good guy and just pretend to be the conspirator because like if other people vote you it's kind of good for you because you're gonna get points um so yeah because of that i'm not gonna put this super high up it's an okay game um yeah i guess it's below dixit yeah yeah that's fine um journey to the dark castle or something like that or i think it's escape from the dark castle um this game is lacking i played this once pretty recently um it's just a game it's a cooperative game where you're going through the castle you're trying to survive you're just rolling dice a lot it has like fairly cool dice rolling mechanics i suppose but that alone is not enough to carry it the art work is just kind of gross to me it doesn't really go like meet the exact like aesthetic that they're really like gunning for um would not be in a hurry to play this game again honestly honestly it might even go into mediocre tiers i'm sorry kayla if you are listening to this um i'm gonna put it here guess who is a terrible gamer next uh, i'll elaborate a little bit guess who is a game where there is an optimal strategy um you just have to find it like generic guess who is very much uh boring how boring is it? I would sooner play it over Sorry just because it's a shorter game and it's less painful than like these other ones. Hardback. Hardback is another game that I quite like. A new pleasant addition to my collection. Hardback is a word building, deck building game, which if you've been paying attention, I love both of those. It's really cool. Um, there's, uh, you buy letter, you start off with a deck of like the common letters of the alphabet and on your turn, you draw five cards and you have to make a word with those five cards or as many cards as you can. Any cards you use in the word, you get to use, get you get their bonuses that you can use to buy more cards or you get victory points. Cards you buy can be in different genres, kind of like in Star Realms, where if you play multiple cards of the same genre on the same turn, you get an additional effect. Um, for that, there's like a good amount of replayability. They have like, um, 
fan fiction cards, which are like modifiers, which you can like add into the game to like change up the gameplay a bit. This game has a whole lot of really playability. If you like deck building, if you like wood building, this is a great game for you. Um, where do I put you? I think I'm gonna put you in right here. It's an excellent game. Magic Maze. Magic Maze is a interesting game. I would go ahead and say it's okay. In this one, you cannot talk. So this is a cooperative game where you cannot talk to the other players. Um, you are trying to get all of the people. You have four like characters in this maze, and you have to get them out of it without communicating with each other. Each player in the game is given a certain action card. So like one person can move the characters up, one person can move them left, one can move them right. And you just have to rely on the other, on everyone knowing what they're doing in order to properly get these people off the maze. You can't talk to each other. You have to angrily stare. It's kind of funny because of that. Um, I would put this here. It's a very chaotic game that can be fun to play with groups of people. Millborn is a terrible game. Um, one of the worst games I've played. My girlfriend got it because she played it as a kid. And I tried it once, and it's really terrible. Um, once you start losing this game, there is nothing you can do. You just suffer. Um, there are some cards that you draw that you just straight up win the game, and it's just, you know, a matter of time at that point. Oceanos. It's been too long since I played it. I've only played it once. Don't really remember it too well. So I am not going to throw that on the list anymore. All right. Pandemic Legacy. Where does this game go? It's like the number two rated game on Board Game Geek. And honestly, I think I'm going to put it all the way up here. Um, so, I haven't played too many Legacy games, except Gloomhaven is honestly the only other one I played. Pandemic Legacy is a great game. You'll notice it's season two on here, and that's because I got it for super cheap at like a board game swap. So, and it said that you could play season two as like a standalone game before season one. So I just went ahead and got this one. Um, what I really like about the legacy part of this game is that it makes your decisions permanent. Now, you can make Pandemic Legacy as a video game, and I don't think it would hit as hard because. You're only supposed to go through this game once, and you are permanently changing the board. With a game, you can just load up another save file, right? This one, like, it makes all your decisions feel super heavy when you make them. You, there's a lot of, like, risk-taking in this. There's a lot of calculation. There's a lot of strategy. There's You're so invested in this game. It's cooperative. You're trying to work really hard so that, you know, cities don't literally die like wow while you're like trying to like you know protect the world amazing game honestly like quarantine would have been so much worse without this game like haven't even been it yet we are close to the end of the campaign but i have enjoyed every minute of it like this is what board games should aspire to be this is what legacy games should aspire to be the crew um quest for planet nine this is another very strong game uh this is a cooperative trick taking game and i'm going to put it um somewhere it's probably going to go into very fun category um you're working together to try to do certain objectives like play certain cards at certain times and have certain people win certain cards um Really fun cooperative trick taking game. Highly recommend it. Has a lot of replayability. There's a bunch of different levels and like variants and stuff that you can do with it. And yeah, I'm going to put you here. Wingspan, the final game, the newest addition to my collection. I got this for Christmas. It's a engine builder. And my God, is this such a good game as well. Like. Where is this going? I think this is going here. Wingspan is one of the most beautiful games I've ever played. Um, 
whoever made this game loves birds and it really shows every card in the game is a different unique bird and from what i believe all of the cards have accurate descriptions of birds as well like their wingspan what kind of nests they make like how big they are um where they live like it has all of this and it combines it into like such a good like engine building game too like it's honestly like amazing like this is a game that should be this is the kind of game that like educators wish that they could make for like their subjects because it teaches you about birds in such a cool way it's super fun and satisfying game but like you're also learning too like i don't know anything about species of birds but i'm starting to be able to like recognize them just because i played this game like i could go outside and be like oh yeah that's like a boston oriole or something like that well okay that's a baseball team that was a terrible example but it's just that wingspan is honestly just a great game it deserves to be as high up as it is on like board game geek and i really think that people should give it a shot really fun engine building game really cool resource mechanics really um, great components as well so yeah okay i'm not rating these ones so that is officially the end of this very long video where i go through all of these games i feel bad because i didn't even get to go through most of them with like any amount of depth which hurts um but yeah um for the five of you that will probably be watching this and no one else um i really hope that you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on it and if you want to just like skip ahead to like this point in the video i will probably be like very slowly scrolling down so that you can kind of see like where i put everything um at the very end i'm planning on time stamping so hopefully there will be a time stamp in the description for all of this <laughs> uh it's gonna be so rough but yeah um hope you guys enjoyed the video and <laughs> make sure to like follow and subscribe no uh, I'm not going to do that. Um, yeah. So I hope that I was able to give you guys some good info on like, you know, what games I like and why I like them. If you heard a game that's interesting, I would encourage you to look up like, you know, a Let's Play of it or something. Um, I quite enjoy listening to like the Beavis and Rooster Teeth Let's Play games, but that's just me. Um, and you can try it on Tabletop Simulator with like your friends too. And most of these games, like, are on Tabletop Simulator, and they work well with it. So, all right. Uh, I will see you guys later. Uh, I don't know how to end videos. Oh, no.